This is it. This is the big moment we've all been waiting for. The grande finale to a fantastic Steel Timber Sports season 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steel Timber Sports Individual World Championships live from the Motor World in Munich. And by my side, as always, the man, the myth, the voice, Troy Mannering. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thank you very much, Marcus. I'm looking forward to this competition here tonight because, uh, I mean, we were just looking at the review just now and uh, the list of athletes. I mean, I had my favorite. Favorites. I had my picks, but uh, man, it is going to be wild tonight. So I think we're going to have a really good time here at the Motor World in Munich. And uh, I mean, the stage is set behind us and uh, <laughs> I, I can't wait to get this thing going. The first seats are coming up. Fantastic athletes competing for gold. Uh, wow. Yeah, wow is right. I mean, you saw the list of the European athletes. We have two North American athletes. And uh, like we said in the pre-show earlier on, you know, you, you throw any of these guys up in the air and you've got a potential winner, uh, but uh, they got to get out on stage. And this is the time where they need to peak. This is the time where they need to be at their absolute highest performance level. And uh, you know they're going to be ready to go. There's a lot of motivated athletes here today. And that position of being on top of that podium as the individual world champion is the pinnacle of the sport for these guys. That's so it. there's a lot at stake for them here tonight. A big shout out, of course, to the champs uh, from New Zealand yes. and, of course, uh, Australia. Shame you can't be with us, but hopefully uh, we'll see you in 2022. And uh, there is a fantastic trophy that can be won tonight. And our field reporter, Lisa, is on her way to that trophy at this very moment. Lisa, over to you. Hi, Marker. Thanks. I'm right now on the ramp where all the athletes will make their way onto the stage. And I already see the trophy. I mean, look at it. What a handmade beauty. I just can't believe it. Actually, it was designed and by uh, in Austria by Robert Pieringer, which makes me so proud since I'm from Austria as well. But today, at the World Championship 2021 in Germany, Munich, at the Motor World Castle House, which is, by the way, also a great event location, there will be 12 athletes, incredible athletes, who will be giving their best in order to take home this amazing trophy. And I'm so excited, I'm shaking, and I would say, just let's start. Yeah, that... <laughs> That's what we want to hear. Let's start, Let's start the competition. <laughs> and of course, Let's take a closer look at these athletes, uh, the 12 men that, that are going for gold tonight. The national championships. You have the national champions, the top 10 of the European ranking are here. And like you said, the two seeded champions from the USA and Canada. Woo! Yeah, I mean, that's quite a list uh, right off the bat. You know, we talked about a lot of these athletes right out of, out of the gate. And you're going to see some really quick times now. As we've seen, there's been a lot of world championship or world records that have fallen this year. Will we have that today at the world championships? Big question. <laughs> so uh, now that we know how this all works out and why these 12 athletes are here, let's take a close look at the athletes themselves. So here they are. I hope. Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Elgin Pugh. Anything you want to add uh, to this man, Troy? Well, I mean, he's the six-time Great Britain champion, uh, you know, representing Great Britain, obviously, and also representing his home of, uh, of Wales. The guy is fantastic. You know, you like to see these guys having a, a really good season. Unfortunately for Great Britain, it wasn't the strongest season because they had so many restrictions up there True. that they didn't have a chance to really train and compete the way that they normally would. So the fact that he has won the Great Britain Championship again and is representing again is just testament to his skill level and his motivation to be here. And I've got him on my list because I've seen him perform in, in Switzerland. I think there's a lot uh, for him to be shown at this competition, yep. uh, just like Severin Bühler. Yeah, I mean, Severin Bühler, he beat out his mentor, Christoph Geisler, at the Swiss Championships wow. where you were. Uh, you saw some great 
representations there across the board from the Swiss athletes. But this is the time for Severin Brule to really step into his own. And uh, and maybe he's the next guy to uh, really surprise us up on the stage there, although he does have a few soft spots he needs to work on. And it's his first individual world championship. Uh, it's not the first for Armin Kugler, the big man from Austria. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> if you look at his list of achievements there, he's been all over the map with uh, the number of events that he's done nationally and internationally. He's got a ton of of experience on the international level. He's been at the World Championships numerous times. He's a big man, he's strong, he's motivated, and he's focused. And uh, the look on his face doesn't really belie <laughs> the child's heart that's in behind him. And, and you could say the same for this Talk man right here, Pierre Puy 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 <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, another guy who's a bit of a jokester behind the scenes, but he's all business on stage. And you could see, you know, he's fifth place at the individual World Championships 2015, six in 2016 silver medalist at the European Trophy in 2021. So he's definitely got the pedigree, and uh, he's one of those guys that I wouldn't call a dark horse here, but he's a guy that can really make waves. Now, Ooh. Ferry Swan, he's mm. a guy that you like a lot. Yeah, definitely. For, for me, he's one of the favorites. You know, he's, he, he's got the whole package. Yep. He's still very young, but he's so focused, uh, and I think he's one of those guys that uh, you talked about that can peak at the right time. So Absolutely. I've definitely got him on my list. Yeah, no and he's got that. a lot of help with uh, peaking at the right time from his mom, who they do a lot of video and, and training. Uh, checks to make sure that he's really on point with all of his stuff. But the thing is, is that Ferry Swan is one of the new generation of athletes where you're not seeing these monster dudes come <laughs> up on stage anymore. He has power to spare, but he's a thin, slight guy. You wouldn't know it to look at him when he's walking down the street that he can chop a, uh, a block off uh, in no time flat. And he holds now the single buck world record. So that's Respect. fantastic for Sweden. Kern Martins, I mean, what a guy. <laughs> Love this man. Yeah, he came into the studio a couple of times and we were chatting with him and uh, he talked about some of his, let's call it, rituals uh, in between the heats that he uh, tends to run into. I don't know if that helps him or hinders him here, but Kern Martins is definitely a great athlete. We're going to keep a close eye on him because he's had a lot of luck this season with how he's gotten to this position here. Jason Lentz. Now, you would have to say he is probably the favorite. Uh, yeah, definitely among the top three to, to four guys here for sure. I mean, he's a third generation uh, timber sports athlete. His dad's a legend back in the USA. He's basically got it all across the board. And he's the only other guy this season, I believe, to have a hot saw under five seconds. He came very close. Wow to the world record. Oh, another one of our favorites. One of our favorites. <laughs> Martin Komarek. Komarek. <laughs> he always seems to have such fantastic events. Then he gets to the hot saw, and then he has a problem with don't the hot saw. Don't say it. Don't say it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to jinx him, so we're going to shake some, uh, some what's that stuff you burn in your house, sage? You know, we're going to shake yeah. some stage and move it around the stage here. So hopefully his hot saw runs and he has yeah. a good season because he has been solid this year. And what about this man, Marcel Dupuis from Canada? Well, what do you got to say about the Canadians, eh? I mean, that's just my personal pride running on high octane here. Marcel Dupuis, he's been many times a medalist with the team competition, as you heard earlier on. The one thing that's sort of missing on his mantle is that individual world championship trophy. So you know he'll be motivated this year to take it down. And of course, the man with the name, Andrea Rossi. I just love to say that <laughs> name. No, it's brilliant. Yeah, the pronunciation is fun. Andrea Rossi, Rossi, yeah? He is a big man. He is one of the most fit athletes you're going oh, to yeah. see on this stage today. Absolutely. Uh, he loves all those uh, uh, those adventure sports outside and cross training, uh, and he's going to be a tough one to beat. Talk about cross training. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of tough one to beat, I mean, Mikael Dubicki, now I have to apologize, I've been pronouncing his name wrong for about 10 years. So it's Mikael Dubicki. Uh, I sat uh, outside for a little bit, and he came by, said hi, and, uh, and uh, still I said, are you ready hand. to go? And I, I'm still trying to find where my hand is. He has uh, massive, massive hands, so strong. And, of course, you know, what Robert can you say Ebner. about uh, Robert Ebner? He is the guy that everybody in Germany is keeping a close eye on in this one. He broke the hot saw world record. He was super emotional about it. So he has to be one of the favorites. If he can get to that hot saw part of the competition, oh, oh yeah. then he'll definitely be a guy that everybody's going to kind of go, uh, you know, I have to battle with this guy. Absolutely. And uh, what these 12 guys have to do, well, we'll show you in the clip that's coming up right now. Here is the competition format. 
Real Timber Sports individual competition. In the first round, all athletes compete in three disciplines. The underhand chop, the stock saw, and the standing block chop. The times achieved will be converted into points upon completion of each discipline. In round one, a difference of one point applies in each discipline. Thus, the fastest athlete received 12 points and the slowest only one point. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. At the end of the first round, the athletes with the lowest scores are eliminated. Only eight athletes make it to the second round. In this second round, the remaining athletes compete in the single buck and the springboard for increased scores. With two points difference between placings, the fastest athlete now receives 16 points and the slowest receives two. The two athletes with the lowest total points are eliminated at the end of round two. Only the top six reach the third round. In the third round, anything is still possible in the hot saw, as an increased score interval of three points applies in this final round. The fastest athlete can score up to 18 points at the hot saw, the slowest only three points. The athlete who manages to achieve the highest total score across all three rounds is the new champion. Well, I don't think we've been much closer to the stage than we are tonight ever before, have we? It's been a long time since we've been that close to the stage. I mean, we've been in the Munich studio for so long, it almost feels foreign for us to be on site at the event location. But it is fantastic to be here. We'll get to have the guys right behind us here on the main stage. And our little studio is a little bit soundproof, but once that hot saw is rocking and rolling, I don't think we're going to be able to hear anything in here. So that's going to be awesome. I can't wait. And of course, we're going to start so far with the first discipline, the underhand chop, and all you need to know about this discipline, well, it's coming up right now. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. Underhand chop. In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes cut through a 32 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. So we are ready to go, and here is the starting order for the underhand chop. Elgin Pugh against Severin Bühler, that's heat one. In heat two, Armin Kugler will take on Pierre Pubary. Heat three, Ferry Swan against Kern Martins. Heat four, Jason Lenz, Martin Komarek. In heat five, we'll see Marcel Depuis and Andrea Rossi. And in heat six, it will be Michal Dupiki against Robert Ebner. All right, guys, coming out onto the stage now, and uh, right, right away, you know, Severin Bühler has a little bit of a disadvantage because this discipline, for him, his best time is 31.06, where Elgin Pugh has a time, a best time of 22.27. The world record still stands since 2015 wow. at uh, 12.39 seconds, held okay, by Braden gentlemen. Meyer, who absolutely blew everybody's mind. Athlete, there. ready, stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, and the guys get into it right away. Elton Pugh right up close to you. Red shirt is uh, Severin Bühler on the far side of the stage from this vantage point here. And straight away, Elton Pugh gets around to the other side with a spry little hop. And that's not bad for a man that is uh, coming along in his age. No, I'm just teasing. He is still in fantastic shape, but Severin Bühler is doing a great job to try and catch up, but it is going to be Elton Pugh in 22-23, and that's a personal best by a few uh, hundredths of a second. And uh, Severin Bühler is still trying to get through, and he does in 32.76. So a bit of a struggle for Severin Bühler, and uh, not getting his personal best there, but it is uh, an improvement for Elgin Pugh, which we always like to see. I told you, he is in great shape. He's in fantastic shape. And what I love about this particular situation for Elgin is, is that is going to give him not only the fact that he won this heat, but he's got the personal best okay, time. Okay, congratulations. 
Both cuts are good. All right, we'll let Andy do his job there. Uh, and is that it's going to give him that mental confidence, that headspace to maybe take it a little bit heavier into the next rounds and uh, and the next discipline. So let's see how that works out for him as we move along and we'll take a look at the slow mos here. As was Severin Bulles got some great slabs coming out of those big chips. His aim is just really on point. But if you look at Elgin Pugh's the number of times that his axe hits in between each of the strokes from Severin Bulle, he's just got a quicker axe head, but the accuracy is there along with the power. And that's something that these guys absolutely need to have. They have to have that power and the accuracy and the speed, but you have to be able to balance between the power and not putting too much into it so that axe doesn't stick. And there's a beautiful split from Elden Q from Wales. Nice job. <laughs> so in the underhand chop, I mean, with our first heat, there you see uh, Elgin Q with a personal best 21.99. Now, the times that we see initially on the stage are always unofficial until one of our stage judges gives us the thumbs up and it's been adjusted from their competition control center. Next up in the underhand chop, we have Armin Kugler from Austria going up against the Frenchman Pierre Puybarré. Oh, wow, 150 Ks against 110 Ks. Yeah, and both of these guys have personal best times that are under 20, pretty close to each other. It's Armin Kugler who is slightly slower in this case than Pierre Puybarré in this particular discipline. Pierre Puybarré, he is just a, a real good underhand chop guy. So let's see if uh, these two can hammer it down and make this competition really fun between the two of them. Oh, and I can feel the vibrations of the music in our yeah, studio. Yeah, it's awesome. It's Finally. <laughs> Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! And bang, we're into it right away. Oh, a big stick by Pierre Puy-Barré. He's not going to like that. That's happened twice now to him. And that's what I was talking about earlier. It's trying to find the combination between that power and the accuracy and not getting too much into it so that you get that axe stuck because it really kills your timing and it kills your energy as well. Pierre Puybarré working hard and trying to get oh, caught up, but Kugler. he doesn't do it. And it's Armin Kugler with a 2104 and Pierre Puybarré with a 2588. So there's no melons underneath these guys at the moment. <laughs> that uh, wood looks like it's going to need a little bit of extra work. Now, I thought maybe with the season we've had, we might drop a few world records here today. But uh, after these first couple of blocks by these guys, I don't know about that. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. Oh, I see some emotion from Army because he was yeah. just you know, getting his axe oh, job done, you know, yeah. best <laughs> best time of the day so far, and, uh, and off I go, but uh, looks like he's motivated. So let's see what happens here. So Armin Kugler makes a really good switch around. I mean, he didn't hop it or anything like that, so no nicknaming the Macat on this one, but he was about a stroke and a half ahead of Pierre Puy-Barré as uh, Puy-Barré came around and it looked like Puy-Barré might catch up but there was just this last couple of strokes on the far side there, you can't see it from here, but Armin Kugler with a clean cut through and you can see the axe just slip and that uh, block's dropping down and there you go, that's the time done for Armin Kugler. So uh, we've got our fastest time of the day with a 20.82 for Armin Kugler. That puts him on top of the underhand chop standings for the moment. And because it's our first discipline, obviously, he will hold out the top spot in the overall standings for the moment as well. So there we have it for the moment. It's Kugler before Pew, Pubare and Bula. But of course, that's only four of 12 that we've seen yep. so far. Woo. All right, so there you see Ferry Swan on the left-hand side. Look at the size difference between these two guys. Not massive, but you know, these are two of the guys that I was talking about. Ferry Swan, the younger generation. Kern Martin's a little bit older than Ferry Swan. And both of them though, are fairly slight guys when you compare them to some of the bigger boys out there, you know, and they are just absolutely fit. And uh, we say this a lot, it's about that core strength when you're swinging the axe or, you know, uh, moving that single buck back and forth. And uh, both of these guys are absolute beasts when it comes to the core strength, particularly okay, Ferry Swan. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. 
So keep a close eye on how quickly these guys are using the axe. Fairy Swan has gotten wow. into it right away. He's got hits after hits after hits. Woo. Yeah, but look at Kern Martins. He's not that slow either. He gets around to the other side first, and he is also moving that axe quickly, which is something I really like to see. Now, this is going to be a tight race, and it's Kern Martins. Oh. He does it in a personal best, 1838, and Fairy <laughs> Swan in 1955. Look at the shake of his head. He can't believe it himself. Oh, fantastic by Kern Martins. That is just amazing. And again, love to see that because it's a personal best, and that's that headspace that these guys can take into the next heats and the next disciplines. So that is fantastic. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. Well, he got his mindset together, Kurt Yes, Martins. he did. Well, I don't know if he went out back and puked like he said he was going to do, but maybe it's working for him if he did. I don't know. But that was a fantastic underhand chop by Kuhn Martins. Great job. And he takes over the top spot in the standings with an under 20. Ferry Swan right there behind him with a 1940. And there you can even see Kuhn Martins got that axe caught quite significantly. Got it out, took an extra stroke, and then turned around. One stroke ahead of Ferry Swan. So, I mean, really, it was that one stroke difference between these two guys, and it really shows in the time that they have as well. They're really close together. So, two personal bests already by the wayside with two guys that we really like to see these personal bests come from, Elgin Q and Kuhn Martins. What a start into these individual world championships yeah, here in Munich. absolutely fantastic. Look at the face, look at the face. <laughs> I don't know if that was, I don't believe I did that, or if that was, I'm trying to relax now. <laughs> but there you go, Kuhn Martin's on the top of the underhand chop standings with an 1816. Awesome. Oh wow, that's another big, big duel in the underhand chop. Yeah. This is gonna be a fun one to watch. Jason Lentz, the US national champion, going up against Martin Komarek, who is arguably one of the nicest guys in timber sports. Always a smile on his face, always fair. If he makes a mistake, he'll go to the judges and say, whoops, my fault, I've seen and it he'll all. get We've himself disqualified. All. You know, that's how fair he is. Brilliant character. But his personal best time is much faster than Jason okay, Lentz. Okay, gentlemen, athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Now Jason Lentz getting into this. Jason is definitely stronger when it comes to the standing block chop. On the underhand, he's not as strong, but he's over to the other side quickly. So obviously this is something that he has been working on to make sure that he is on point for this event. Now he's got that axe stuck a couple of times. And he's looking pretty good still, but it is, oh my goodness, Martin Komarek and Jason Lentz. Holy smokes, folks, how close is that? And Jason Lentz gets a personal best with 2014. What a great job by the American right ahead of Martin Komarek. That was a close heat. Oh, wow. And believe it or not, Kern Martin stays on top. On top. Oh. <laughs> oh, I what love a crazy it. start into this competition. Jason Lentz with his time. Now, it's unofficial of 19.98. Martin Komarek with a 20.08. Oh, wait a minute. I think my clock might be set officially okay, now. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. <laughs> Yep, my clock has been officially locked in. So Jason Lenz with a 19.98. He's under 20 seconds. So definitely a good personal best for him. Martin Komarek is a little bit slower than his personal best, but he's currently sitting in fourth place. But look at this. Both of these guys just hammering away on this block. Now you'll see Jason gets his ax caught there. And then one more time as he comes around to the other side, try and imagine how much faster he would have been without getting that axe stuck. Oh, yeah. And there you can see the accuracy and the speed and the power from Martin Komarek. Unbelievable. And there's that other stick by Jason Lenz on the other side of the stage. And it's just a couple of strokes more here, and you can see both of these blocks almost going down at the same time. I mean, that was millimeters apart.
so Kuhn Martin still holding down the top spot there with an 18 16 that is a and a bit of a surprise best. if you ask me yeah I mean but this is what this competition is all about anything no can happen about, yeah. and anything will happen so surprises we love them we <laughs> yeah, love them sure. you know couldn't have a better start to this competition fantastic yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic start. And I mean, Jason Lenz, he's got himself a personal best there. What a great job. Absolutely. And uh, talking about Jason, he's standing with Lisa at this very moment. Uh, so let's hear what he has to say. Thanks, Marcus. I'm here with Jason. Jason, that was incredible. Considering this are the world championships, are you happy with your per performance, personal best? Uh, yeah, it was a pretty good cut. Uh, I had a knot in the center of my log and bit my axe in the front, I believe, and uh, yeah, I didn't have enough time to change out axes. I had to keep using it, but. But anyway, you did an amazing job, first round. Yeah, it's not too bad. Hopefully the time stays near the top. All right, all the best for the rest of the competition. Thank you. All right, and now back to the guys. Well, thanks very much, Lisa. <laughs> How cool is that, dude? Yeah. Personal best, but man. Yeah, it's okay, you know. <laughs> I, it'll, I hope it stays at the top for a while. I mean, dude, that was awesome. Personal best. But that's these guys. They're just all about the competition. Brilliant. They just want to improve every step of the way. All right, speaking of another North American dude, Marcel Dupuy going up against Andrea Rossi. Andrea Rossi, Rossi, oh, Rossi. Well said, yeah. Yep. So as we said off the top of the show, Marcel Dupuy, a really, really strong character, and he is searching for that individual world title still. You can see sixth place at the individual world championships in 2015 in Poland. So he's been around for a while. He's got the pedigree. Andrea Rossi, as I mentioned, one of the very, very fit characters out there. So it's the first time against the Routinier. What? <laughs> well, a guy with a lot of routine. <laughs> okay, gentlemen. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Wow, power swings by both of these guys getting right into it. Now you can see Marcel Dupuy using those sprinter shoes with the spikes on the bottom, and he was quick to the other side, but oh my Andrea God. Rossi right here with him. And, uh, oh, a huge stick by Rossi. That's going to cause him problems. Oh. And it's going to be, oh! Marcel Dupuy with a 16-6-7. <laughs> a personal best for the Canadian. Good job. I got a little bit of uh, Canadian pride going on there. And Andrea Rossi, not that far behind with a 20.85. But unfortunately for Andrea, that time puts him down in seventh place in underhand chop. While Marcel Dupuy unseats Kuhn okay, Martins at the top. congratulations. Both cuts are good. And now we know where he's wearing those sprinter shoes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, you're going to see this on a couple of occasions. You'll see it uh, by the, uh, the standing block chop, and you'll also probably see it in a few times with the guys wearing them for the single butt. So you can see that Andrea Rossi doesn't have them. He's got very soft-soled shoes, but you'll also notice the chain mail socks underneath. Now, that's there, obviously to protect their feet against a cut from these incredibly sharp axes that they're using. It's a requirement that these guys have those chainmail socks on for safety. And uh, yeah, I think the difference here was that right there, that massive stick by Andrea Rossi, and the fact that oh, there was that final no slippage at Ooh. all by Marcel Dupuy on his feet. He was just using every aspect of that axe and his feet to get through there quickly. And did he ever, with a time of 16-4-3, and a personal best. Ten athletes, four personal bests already here at the World Championships. Wow. Now we've got two guys that are going to come up and go head-to-head -head with each other shortly, and that's Mika Dubicki and Robert Ebner. Now, <laughs> they've, they've, they've held two of the stronger European athletes to the end of this heat in this first discipline. And, of course, I am really looking forward to seeing Same how here. these two guys rock and roll against each other. Now, as we know, they're going head-to-head -head on stage with each other, but it's not about who wins the heat because it's not a knockout system. It's about who gets the fastest time. But knowing that you've got a guy like Robert or like Mikael Dubicki on uh, the, the left or the right of you, that provides some motivation. And oh, you wow. can see Robert Ebner fully focused here. Looks okay, like he's gentlemen. in the tunnel. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. 
Oh, a huge stake by Mikael Dubicki right off the hop, but it's Ebner on the far side in the gray jersey who has got the quick axe going. Another stick by Dubicki, and he switches to the other side first ahead of Ebner. Ebner took a little bit of time there to aim that uh, first hit on the second side, and Dubicki just really rocking and rolling. I think he's going to take this one down as Ebner gets his axe stuck on that one as well now. And there it goes, Dubicki in a 25-21. Ebner struggling on these last hits with a 29-82. Now, neither one of those two times are actually very strong for these guys. They won't They're be at happy the with that. No They're doubt about them. that. Both of them are fairly far down the list. So Mika Dubicki at the moment is sitting in ninth, ninth yeah. and Robert Ebner in 11th. So they're going to really need to pick up the pace in the next two disciplines if they want to step up into the top eight going into the next round. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. Yeah, and you can see it in their faces. They're not happy at all, both of them. Yeah, I, you know, we've seen definitely better cuts from these guys. And you never know. I mean, the, the competition wood that we have here is always really well balanced out and really fair. They don't, they don't get handed the wood. They have to, the, to take it via a draw system. So it could be, like you heard with Jason Lenz, a knot in the middle of his block. It could be the same situation for both of these guys here. It also makes a difference if that axe gets stuck in there, and that's where, you, like I was saying, you have to draw the line between power and precision. Yeah, and I was a bit surprised with Robin Ebner waiting for the first stroke after he switched sides. Well, it could be that, um, that he had a little bit of an off balance, and that's how good these guys are. You know, they can be ready to go, and if they know they take that swing, they're going to step off the block. What's the, what's the better option, step off the block? or wait, get the balance, and then hit, you know? So, so yeah, there yeah. we go. Underhand <laughs> chop timing, and Marcel Dupuy and Kuhn Martins at the top with some really solid times. Uh, only the top four guys are under 20 seconds. So, good action so far, Marcus. I oh, think totally. I'm enjoying myself a little bit in here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm enjoying myself very much in here at the yep. moment. And... Uh, these points, of course, are very important that you're collecting in this round yeah. one, you know, three disciplines, mm -hmm. and uh, especially with, with Robert and, and uh, Dubicki, you know. Whew, not, That's not a little happy. bit surprising, I gotta be honest with you. I mean, I, I had both of these guys as my top picks, uh, among the top picks, uh, but, uh, you know, unfortunately for them, this wasn't their chop. And uh, we're taking a look at the two fastest cuts right now between Marcel Dupuis and Kern Martins. Now, these guys, you could see, and the side by side, although they weren't in this against each other, they were really close as far as their timing. Uh, Kern Martins was just a slight half, maybe half stroke, full stroke behind Marcel Dupuis. But look how motivated Marcel Dupuis mm. is and Kern Martins. What a great job. And here comes the head shake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're heading uh, to our next discipline, and of course, yep. the most important facts uh, of uh, the stock saw are coming up right now so that you know what's going to be happening in the next few minutes. The Steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc, and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. So we're ready to have some cookies. Heat one, Armin Kugler versus Kuhn Martins. In heat two, Pierre Cuvaret against Elgin Pugh. Heat three, consisting of Severin Bühler and Andrea Rossi. In heat four, Michal Dubicki will take on Marcel Dupuis. In heat five, we'll see Jason Lenz take on Martin Komarek. And in heat six, Robert Ebner against Ferry Svan. Now there is always the opportunity and always a chance that we see a world record drop here. But they're going to have to beat 8.51, which is held by the Norwegian Ole Magnus Hudjebergen. And I only bring that up because I wanted to say Get his name. name. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, warm up your swords. Uh, 
All right, so that's a lot of noise out there. Fantastic. We love it. And you can see those foam pads that the guys drop their saws into. Uplates, Here ready. we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Uh, Armin Kugler in the red on the left-hand side of your stage. And Kurt Martin's also in the red on the right-hand side of your stage. And Kurt Martin's has got himself a bit of a slow first cut. And it's going to be Armin Kugler getting this one in 12.04. Kurt Martin struggling to get that final up cut of the 14.94. And, uh, oh, yeah, he can see he's not super happy about that. And there might even be a check here. They're going to throw a flag down. No, they're not. So looks like we're all safe. That's good. It seemed like he thought maybe he cut over the line or something. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. Kern Martin's clearly not happy with that first, uh, or with his cuts there. And I think he started off really well, but yep. uh, I, I'm not sure we didn't have uh, the camera aside. Maybe we're going to see it now. Well, you can see here, that's a great start by Armin Kugler. Yeah, Look how thin that is. That's what like, they always I mean, say, yeah. Really, really nice. Bit of an angle heading towards the bottom, but that's no big deal. They've got uh, 10 centimeters. Within that 10 centimeters, they got to cut those two pieces. Now, here's the upcut by Oh yeah, he came really close Ooh. to the line at the top there. And I think he might have been just putting a little bit too much pressure on the uh, on the blade, which slows the chain down. And uh, that's, you know, that's the technique with this particular discipline. The saw does most of the work. That doesn't mean you can sit there and just let it do the work though. <laughs> you actually have to have the right amount of pressure. You have to know the saw a little bit and you have to have kind of a feel for it. And uh, it could be that, you know, Armin Kugler had a nicer piece of wood. It's anybody's guess, let's we'll see how the rest of these cuts go on uh, these two sides because it's the same block in there for all of the guys. So Kuhn, uh, not too happy with that, of course, but yeah. the, still, he had a smile on his face. Yeah, and then here we see how the overall uh, standings will switch. Now, here's where, once we get into the second discipline, third discipline, the first round, we start to see these standings change a little bit. So Kern Martins, by default, gets up to the top there because he had the second fastest time in the first discipline. He moves up to the top in the overall, and we move on to heat number two with Pierre Puy Barre. I, I'm and always Elgin a little bit Pugh. scared when I see the picture of Pierre. I'm sorry, <laughs> I have to say he looks <laughs> he looks very very focused. That's the bouncer at the French bar that you yeah, don't yeah. want to go into, right? <laughs> And these guys are so practiced with their pick and drop on these things. Okay, gentlemen, warm up your swords. I mentioned the pad down there. The pad is meant to say this a lot, just meant to keep those saws from skipping away when Athlete, they're waiting. Here ready. we go. Stand to your timber. Three. Two, one, go! Okay, really, it looked like it was a fast start by Elgin Q, but I didn't see it because we switched camera angles. Yep, so Elgin Q's got a nice upcut so far, but it looks like it might be Pierre Puy Barre getting there. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. 11.51 for Puy Barre, 12.36 for Elgin Q, two pretty good times. So remember, 8.51 is the world record, so they're not that far off, but then this is a game of milliseconds. And of course, we're okay, getting to see the best of the best. Both cuts are good. So that moves Pierre Puy Barre into the top of the stock saw standings. Now, here we see, yeah, that was a pretty good start by Elgin Pugh. I think that first cut by Elgin was better than Puy Barre's, but on the up cut, and that is the, uh, the class there, you know, it was Puy Barre who just had the smoother upcut. And again, it's just about the amount of pressure you're applying. You know, too much, it's cutting slowly. Too little, it's cutting slowly, you know? So yeah. that, that's the tough draw in the middle to figure out how you're going to cut that nice and clean and fast. All right, so Puy Barre moves to the top of Stocksaw. LBQ in third place in Stocksaw. Let's take a look at how that affects the overall standings. And there you go, Kuhn Martins uh, moves up into the top spot. Kugler, Pu, and Puy Barre, one, two, three, four. And still eight athletes to come. Yep. And of course, the next team, you can see Severin Bühler and Andrea Rossi. Here they come. 
Look at the times on their personal best. How close is that? Mm -hmm. So uh, interesting here. Now, Severin Bühler, he's strong in the motor saw discipline. So this is a spot where he can pick up the pace a little bit and maybe gain some good points and uh, see if he can get himself up in the ranking a little bit after not the strongest showing in underhand chop. Okay, gentlemen, warm up your swords. Andrea Rossi wasting no time. Quick, uh, you know, shake check, puts it down and gets ready to go. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Look at the stance difference between these two guys and Andrea Rossi with a little slip up at the start there. That leaves it wide open for Severin Buehler. And here you go, the skill of Severin Buehler really knowing how these saws work. And that is oh, a great time not bad for at Severin Buehler. 1071, fastest so far in stock saw. That puts him atop the stock saw rankings. And that's what I was talking about. If that time holds, then he can get back into the mix after not a strong performance in underhand chop. And, okay, we've got a nod from Dr. Jörg Kurtzenberger. So it looks like cuts are good. Okay, Let's see. congratulations. Both cuts are good. Andy Hall confirms so. Both cuts are good. There was a quick well review done, on Stan B. <laughs> yeah. Well done, gentlemen. Both yeah, cuts are good. good. <laughs> I love it. And there comes the pit crew coming out onto the stage. You can see in the background, Mika Dubicki getting ready to come out on stage. For his heat. Now watch what happens here with Andrea Rossi. Reaches down, gets up quickly, ah, and then he just clips the top of that block. Now, I'm pretty sure that that's what they were checking because he clipped the top of the block. They want to make sure that they have a complete cookie, and that is a problem. If you clip enough of that oh, cookie yeah. off, then that is a disqualification, but they deemed it fair, and that's a good thing because he will have a time. The DQ, unfortunately, will make it uh, no time, so... And that means... Yeah. No points. No points, exactly. So Severin Bruller, though, redeeming himself in stocks off very well. And of course, we've seen the first personal best in the stock saw, so um, congratulations to Switzerland. Yeah, always, always, always love to see those personal best drop as well. Yeah, that of course means that, you know, you've showed your best performance on the day, and yep. these are the individual world championships. And this so is the time to do it yeah, if you're going to do it at all. When you want to, that's the time you want to do it. Yep. So Severin Bühler moves to the top of the standing in stock saw. It's not going to make a massive dent in his uh, overall standing. So you can see he's now moved up into sixth place, but that is a significant jump from 12th. So he's in a solid position at the moment, but we got a couple of guys coming out that are also really strong. And like you said, here it keeps him in the mix. Yeah. I think Marcel Dupuis probably puts a ton okay, of pressure on himself in order soul. to perform well at these events, you know? I mean, all of these guys do. And, and some of the guys manage that pressure and some of the guys not so strong with it. You know, there's a lot of mental coaching that goes on with these events as well. So you could see guys like uh, Robert Ebner, eyes closed, Athlete, breathing deeply. Ready. So that's what these guys Stand are doing a lot to make sure they're timber. mentally strong for these events. Three, two, one, go. Oh, yes, great start by both the guys. I don't know if that's Dupuis or Dubicki. Oh. oh, a little bit of a hop there on the up cut by Dupuis, I believe. And it's Dubicki with an 11.91 and Dupuis with a 12.17. So two fast times right out of the gate here in Stocksaw. And I think these guys should... End up in third and sixth, if I'm not wrong. Overall, yeah. I mean, No, no, uh, in the Stocksaw, in the Stocksaw. So I'm looking here at the stock saw results. Marcel Dupuis in fifth and Mika Dubicki in third. But we've got oh. a review there because of a broken cookie. It has to be complete. Even if the chip has broken off, the cookie has to be complete. So from my perspective here, Should be all right. it, looks like, nah, it looks like there's a bit of a cutout. So that may cost Dupuis. I hope not, but uh, that's the discussion that Andy Hall and Jörg Kurzenberger are having right at the moment to see if they can find that missing piece. And you could see how thin that cookie was by Marcel. Oh. 
Ah, so everybody's going to look for that missing piece of wood. Yeah. The question is, where's it gone? Because that uh, that saw blade, now they're digging through the sawdust to try and find it, because that saw blade could kick it around anywhere on stage. And that's the big discussion here. So will it be a DQ or will they deem it fair? And that's the tough position that right now that Marcel Dupuy okay. is in. Unfortunately, we have a disqualification for an uh, incomplete disc. That's unlucky. However, this cut is good. Uh, that is a sour mm. apple right there for Marcel Dupuy. And uh, that means no points in stock saw for the Canadian. Let's see what happened here. Oh, so this is Mika Dubicki. Uh, he had a really nice thin start on that cut. Would love to get a shot of Marcel Dupuy's cut so that we can maybe see what it is that happened over there. But Mika Dubicki always solid. Let's see here. And this is how close it is, you know. If he would have made that a complete cookie, he would have been on top of the pack. So that first cut, it looks like he was solid on the first one. It's the second cut that's the issue here. And he came in really, really thin at the bottom and angled it towards the line near the top. And when the cookie dropped down, I think is when that piece broke off. And he looked at it really quickly. He probably knew himself that, oops, I might have a problem there. But I actually didn't see it, to be honest. It's a it's a tough one to see from that angle yeah. because the camera didn't really get underneath that uh, that uh, that shot on his upcut, but it was a really thin upcut, and that's where the drama happened. So right now, uh, so Dubicki is sitting in third, and Dupuy, unfortunately, okay, so he's sitting in last place the video here. For the cookie on stand B. Ah, and now we've just that's heard there's an appeal. So this is also part of the rule book. The athlete can go, go and make an appeal if they feel like the call on the stage at the time of competition was incorrect. They can go back and they'll look at their video in competition control center. I so this is a really big deal for these guys because now there's a chance that... Uh, Marcel Dupuy could get his points actually reinstated, so we'll, well see. It, and it is so close together because now he would be in eighth position overall. If that's a complete cookie, he's on top of the pack. Yep. And uh, okay, to be honest, so I think he had two complete cookies. I didn't see that missing that? piece. I think that dropped out when it fell down. Well, this is the thing that, that they have these really high-speed cameras. You can see the video that the guys are looking at, and they're that's keeping complete. a really close eye on this second cut. Now, here it is right there. Unfortunately, that first cookie hops a little bit, so it blocks the view of the second cut. But you're right, it doesn't look like the okay, cutaway on, happens because of the saw. It, comes it the looks cookie. like the cutaway might have happened, or it could be due to it dropping on the floor, and okay. maybe that piece just went flying away. So it's a tough call for these guys because you can see that first cookie hopping right in front of the view that they actually need. But how yeah, good is it to have all those yeah, cameras yes. and all the technology to make sure wrong, that these decisions here, are as precise as they out. are? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it is really the probably one of the most fair ways to take a look at this competition. And Marcel so Dupuy absolutely fine, has the right to appeal that on-stage decision in this situation if he feels like so there was not the right call. And the judges the will go and look at it like they're doing right now. And if they believe that they also made a mistake, they're the first ones to admit it and give these guys a pass. No doubt about that, yeah. Okay, go with that. It's all, about just all right, so it looks like right we're going to have our our uh, decision from the judges now. So let's see if that appeal has actually brought Marcel Dupuy any love. So let's find out what Andy has to say. Okay, after having reviewed the video, we've decided it's an incomplete disc. The saw slightly cut out on the upcut. Ah, uh, that's a okay. bummer, okay. But I mean, he made the appeal, that's his right. The judges looked at it. And that's brilliant. And, uh, that just makes sure that we have yeah. the fairest uh, competition for all of our athletes. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, it is the world championship. Sorry, you have to say something if you believe, right? All right, stock saw number five, heat number five between Jason Lentz and Martin Comerick. Seems like these guys are destined to be battling each other mm -hmm. all night long. So underhand chop was uh, between these two guys, and now so is stock saw. Now, I got to say, both of these guys, really solid in the stock saw. It's anybody's guess how this one is going to break down. Uh, if we look at uh, Martin Komarek, again, slightly faster than Jason Lenz in this discipline. However, we saw in the uh, yes, earlier one he was faster on paper than Jason Lenz, but Jason Lenz beat him. 
So uh, and let's we still see. haven't seen the time under 10 seconds. Correct. So maybe yeah. um, now we're in for something new. Well, Comarex personal best is 986. So uh, okay, yeah. gentlemen, warm up your swords. <laughs> And of course, let's not forget in Heat 6, we've got Robert Ebner and Ferry Swan still to come. Yeah. So maybe I'll get that time under 10 seconds. Athletes, <laughs> ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Wow, great start by both of them. Komarek was slightly faster on the block. And the transition by Komarek was fantastic, but Lenz looks quicker. Oh! How close is that? <laughs> Comerick, 11.41, Lenz, 11.58, personal, personal best, best for Lenz. Hey, wow, that was close. I thought Lenz was going to take it down, but uh, Comerick, woof. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. So that's the second and third best time here in yep. the stock zone. And Martin Comerick continues to impress. Continues to impress. I think he's 49 years old. <laughs> How old is he? I don't know. I'm not really sure. 27. He's, he's one of the older guys in the in the, in the and one of the guys that you just look at and go, wow, absolutely fantastic athlete, through and through, consistent, strong. And uh, here we go with these cuts from these gentlemen. As we take a quick, that's a big fat cookie right there. I believe that's Jason Lentz. And these two guys are on top of the pack now with 19 points at the moment before we go to that final heat. Wow, that was a heavy <laughs> swing down from, uh, he almost wanted to cut it with like yeah. it was an ax. Why not? Yeah, why not? Hey, whatever works, eh? But Martin Komarek has such a great feel for all the different tools that he uses on the stage. The only one that's bit him in the butt a few times is that hot saw, yeah. you know? True. And there you could see. Yeah, he must be happy with that. Yeah, he's got to be happy with that. I mean, he's got the points there. Martin Komarek currently sitting second in the stock saw results with one more heat to go here. Look at the concentration by him there. And I love his ear protectors on it. It says fight fair. And that's exactly, that, that's his attitude through and through. He is one of the most fair athletes out there, you know? Absolutely. I just keep going back to the Swiss competition. He yep. didn't have his head protection on, and he went to the judges afterwards and said, I forgot my head protection. You have to DQ me. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you go. Komarek in second, Lentz in third, with Bueller still with a great time of 10.63 on top. Overall standings, hey, look at that. Komarek and Lenz lead the pack with Kern Martin sitting in third place. One more heat's coming up in the stock, so, and that is a... Absolutely fantastic one. Robert Ebner against Ferry Swan. Yep. Robert Ebner's been around a little bit longer than Ferry Swan. Both of these guys have personal bests under 10 seconds, as you see there. Um, the difference in the size isn't going to play much of a role here. It's all about their experience and the feel of that saw in their hands. Now, Ferry Swan has been traditionally the better axe man and single bucker, but you know that he's that guy that's going to be looking at these dif different disciplines and saying, where am I weak? Where can I improve? Over and over And he is again. going to take that to heart. Now, Robert Ebner used to have that love-hate relationship with these motor saws as far as competition is concerned because he works with these motor saws all day long in his job. And, and he has become one of those guys that's incredibly strong with the motorized okay, saws. Warm up your saws. So exciting, so exciting. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Super fast start by both of those guys. Ebner wow. was on top of that thing wow. so quickly. And look at this, Ebner, he's gonna get up there quick. Ebner's gonna be faster. 1064 to an 1181. Ebner ahead of Ferry Swan. The times aren't mega, mega fast, but they are strong enough to put Robert Ebner in second place and Ferry Swan, surprisingly, with a uh, adjusted time of 11.56, slips into sixth place in this discipline. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. 
All right, now we've seen an adjustment on Robert Ebner's time as well. So his time has actually been reduced down to 10.50. That puts him atop the pack in sing or excuse me, in Stocksaw. There's too many S's. <laughs> <laughs> Single buck, stock saw, super fast saw, super sharp axe. <laughs> oh, look at him go. Ferry Swan, really, really nice start by both Perfect of these cookie. guys. The only thing is on the upcut here, it could be that Ferry Swan was leaning into it just a little bit too much. And that's the experience of Robert Ebner playing a role there. He was fast, but Robert Ebner was just a little bit faster. Now, watch the technique that uh, Robert Ebner uses here. He had a, an arching technique going down, and then the at, the halfway block, at the halfway point here, he just stopped the back of the saw and used his forward arm to use that wrenching action to get up to the top. So Robert Ebner with a really nice cut. And you're going to see these different techniques in play throughout these different disciplines as well, particularly with the hot saw and with the single bar. So many different ways of using that saw. <laughs> yeah, he's motivated. He's motivated. I mean, since the German champion, he's been hot to try. So Robert Ebner moves to the top of the stock saw rankings just ahead of Severin Bühler. And that means in the overall standings, Ebner jumps up to fourth place. Komarek holding on to the lead with Jason mm -hmm. Lenz and Ferry Swan second and third. And there's Ebner in fourth place. So he's in the zone right now. Oh, yeah. And overall points, 18 yeah. apiece. And Ferry Swan with 17. And Ferry Swan in third position at the moment. And he's standing right next to Lisa at this very moment. Over to you guys. All right. Thanks, Marcus. I mean, that was amazing. You are so quick. That's just incredible. How did you feel up today? Uh, my underhand was uh, pretty good. I can uh, I could do it a uh, one hit less, but that's okay. And uh, Stokes, so now I pushed a little bit too much on the up cut, but I'm happy. All right, excited for the next competition? Yeah, absolutely. All right, I wish you all the best. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. Well, thanks, Lisa. <laughs> thanks, Ferry. This man always has a smile on his face, yeah. doesn't he? Like, like most of the timber sports athletes. Yeah. That we and get to and see. this is that mathematical aspect that I was talking about. Yeah, I could have hit one time less, maybe. I mean, these guys know exactly how many times they're hitting the block and if they need that extra hit or if they don't. And obviously, he realized it a little bit later. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, these guys are they're that they're that on it that they know okay, one hit less, two hits less. So yeah, let's take a look at the side by side here in Stocksa. Top two athletes in that discipline coming up. So you could see Robert Ebner and Severin Bühler. Severin Bühler was the nice surprise here with a very quick time. Oh, and the technique and from Robert. The that's technique. what you said. That's, that's what I was yeah. talking about here. Robert Ebner held that backhand solid and just used the front hand to pull up on the saw. And that works nice. for him, and that obviously got him the faster time here in the stock saw. So uh, good job by Robert Ebner just to jump ahead of Severin Bühler. But congratulations to Severin Bühler, a personal best here, and a great way to redeem himself from basically being last in the underhand chop. Absolutely. And now we come to a really difficult discipline, the standing block chop. Yeah, that's the classic uh, way of felling a tree that's being yeah. simulated. And uh, all you need to know about the standing block chop, well, it's coming up right now. Standing block chop. At the standing block chop, the felling of a tree with an ax is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 30 centimeters has to be cut through both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. So here we have the starting order in the standing block shop. Heat 1, Elgin Pew taking on Severin Bühler. In Heat 2, it will be Pierre Puberet against Michael Dubicki. Heat 3, Kern Martins and Robert Ebner. Heat 4, Marcel Dupuis against Andrea Rossi. Heat 5, Armin Kugler against Martin Komarek. And in Heat 6, Jason Lenz versus Ferry Svan. All right, something that we talk a lot about in this particular discipline, and anybody who wants to get into the sport and try it out on their own has an opportunity to go to a camp and test it out, but the only will allow you to start on the standing block chop once you have a solid 
hold of the axe and the underhand chop. So you cannot, they will not let you go to this discipline okay, gentlemen. before you know how to use that axe and the underhand Ready. chop. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, Elgin Pugh, Severin Bueller, and Elgin Pugh, definitely the stronger of the two guys here. Severin Bueller, though, he's definitely been working with Christoph Geisler, who is pretty solid in this discipline. The question is here, oh boy, look at this. Both of these guys going over to the other side of their block, bang on with each other. So this may be a closer battle than I anticipated. Elgin Pugh putting everything he's got into it. He's got it! Oh my goodness, how close was that? That was a super tight heat between these two guys. Unfortunately, I can't see any times yet because our screen's gone bananas. Luckily, we got live behind us. We'll give those times to you in a second here. 22.62 ah. for Elgin Pugh and Severin Bula with 22.72. Another personal best for Severin Bula. Yep. But of okay, course, Elgin Pugh beating him and having the best time so far with 22.47. That is the yep. latest and corrected time. So that's fantastic job by Severin Bueller. Big congratulations to him. That's two personal bests in the competition so far. And that tells you a lot about his motivation for oh, yeah. this competition, absolutely. And of course, that is a great way of showing you that he won the Swiss Nationals yeah, uh, for absolutely. a reason. And you can see Elgin Pugh just putting everything he's got into those blows. And there you see Severin Bühler, just fantastic. And I mean, Christoph Geisler is a very, very strong standing block chop. So you know that he's going to be giving a lot of tips to Severin Bühler about making sure that he's got the right axe angle, so that his aiming is correct, so that he's got the right power going to each one of those blows. And it really shows in how he performed here today against LQQ. And our stage crew working hard out there. We always have to give props to the stage crew because, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on up there, and they have a really important role in that they have to make sure that that stage is tickety-boo for the next heat because and especially in this one. And we always like to compare one. them to the Formula One uh, well, crew. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Why not? They're and doing exactly a look at, the same at thing. At the yeah. That's just uh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and I mean, it's important for these guys to get a good job out there on stage because that stage needs to be really clean, particularly for this event because we've seen in past where an athlete will be hitting a block and he'll try to get around to the other side and he'll fall. Oh yeah. We've seen it a couple of times where the athlete will fall down. And the last thing you want to do is fall down with that sharp axe in your hand. So next heat in the blocks, we got Pierre Puybarré going up against Mika Dubicki. And again, two guys that are very strong in this discipline. Uh, slight advantage to okay, Mika Dubicki gentlemen. based on his power. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two. One, go! Oh, a huge stick by Pierre Puybarré. Michael Dubicki getting right into it, though. Woo. Another one from Pierre Puybarré, and that's going to cause him mega problems as Dubicki has already moved over to the other side. Puybarré about three strokes behind now as he moves over to the other side of his block that I don't know if he's going to be able to catch up to the Polish man who's got oh. it down. What a fantastic time by Michael Dubicki, 2020. And Pierre Puybarré in an unofficial 21-29. Not that far behind, but boy, he got that axe caught a couple of times heavily using that power. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. That, of course, is the sentence that we always want to hear. Always want to hear that, for sure. So it's Dubicki. Before Pierre Puberé, Elgin Pew, and Severin Bula. And if I look at the overall standings, that puts Mika Dubicki on top with a total of 22 points. Pierre Puyibarré tied actually for 22 points in second place and Severin Bühler with 21 points in third. So that's a great position for him to be in at the moment. True, but, but we've only seen four yeah, of 12. Exactly, I was just going to say, you know, uh -huh. that's two of six heats, right? Four of 12 athletes, so we got a lot more to come. And uh, those times will change, those times will be affected and those positions will also be shifting around quite but a lot. But that's what it makes it so exciting, yeah. isn't it? I, yeah. I love it, love, love it. it. Absolutely fantastic, that's the way it should be. Yeah, the world champs have been absolutely fantastic so far. Yep. Many personal bests.
all the athletes being very close together. So uh, it's and gonna this be very is, exciting to see who's gonna make it to the round two. Well, this is what I was just gonna say. This is a key component, this standing block chop now, because they have to get through this in order to be among the top eight athletes to move on to round two. Now, if we're looking at the next heat coming up, we got Kern Martins going up against Robert Ebner. Kern Martins, very, very solid in this discipline, but Robert Ebner has shown he's got a fire in his belly this year and is definitely one of the favorites to take the overall competition. Surprisingly weak start by Robert Ebner this time around, unfortunately, so hopefully he can pick up the pace as we get towards the latter part, but this is a good discipline for the German. And Kuhn Martins okay, also has a national record for standing block. Athletes, so, yeah, ready! Tough call here. Stand to your timber. Three, Look two, focused, one, Oregon. go! Bang on. Their timing is with each other right off the mark. A couple of little sticks by Kern Martins. Nothing bad, but wow! Robert Ebner over to the other side, quick as a wink. He's not wasting any time to get to the other side of that block and try and dig through there. He's doing a great job. A little stick for him, and uh, Kern Martins trying to catch up. Is it going to be Kuhn Martins dropping it first? It's going to be close. It's going to be Kuhn Woo! Martins. Oh, my God. I am really amazed there. <laughs> Kuhn Martins was about two strokes behind Robert Ebner going to the other side. I don't know if Robert Ebner didn't dig through on the first side deep enough or if it was uh, just a bit of a knot in the wood. We'll have to find that out later on. But uh, Kuhn Martins gets this one. The times are not fantastic at this point. 22.72 okay, and 25.82. Both cuts are good. But the cuts are fair. We don't see a disqualification very often in this particular discipline. And uh, both of those guys, I mean, they're going to be happy about getting through it. They're not going to be super thrilled with their times, quite honestly. Yeah, but Kuhn Martins uh, has a total of 22 points at the moment, which puts him into the same position as Dubicki and Kubere. So that's something he can be very pleased yeah, with. Yeah, three but, guys uh, tied for the top spot. Yep, Tough. but again, three more heats coming up, so everything can be shuffled down again. Just if you're wondering, by the way, if uh, if you see two or three or four guys even tied for the top spots on points uh, after the uh, first round, then what they do is they look back at these times of the previous heats and then the faster times move into the top spots. So if we see a tie. And it very much looks like it at the moment. All athletes so close together, unbelievable. Just look at the determination on Robert Ebner's face, though, as he slaps out some big chips, putting everything he's got into it. Targeting nicely, going down for these up cuts there, and uh, then switching to the down. <laughs> nice pictures, beautiful pictures. Yeah. I like to see Robert Ebner smiling. It's, yeah. uh, he was so motivated and so focused and almost angry with himself in the German championships that uh, that weight was off his shoulder getting the the, uh, the world record in the hot saw and winning the German championships. It seems like now he's just sort of in it for the fun more than anything, which is really important. All right, heat number four coming up between Marcel Dupuis and Andrea Rossi. Strong discipline for Dupuis. Surprisingly, I don't see the cleats on his feet today for this one. Or maybe he's just got different shoes with different cleats. I don't know. Can you see cleats there? I can't nope. see cleats. Okay, gentlemen. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Look at that massive wide stance from Andrea Rossi. Marcel Dupuis getting right into it. I don't think it's going to be long before he switches to the other side. Two, three, four more hits. No, not Both even that. Them. Both, Both of them. them going over quickly. A little bit of a pause in the action there. That was strange. Dupuis getting close, though. One more roll should do it, and he does it. 19-19, and Andrea Rossi, ooh, struggles with a stick, and he's got a tough one there. It looks like that one was holding on for dear life with a 25-41. And he's looking at that block, wondering what the heck was holding on to that? Some alien DNA in that wood or something. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. I come up with one weird one every once in a while, hey? What do you mean one? <laughs> one at least. OK, congratulations. Both cuts are good. So Marcel Dupuis, top time in standing block chop, and that puts him also in the top of the overall rankings. 
Excuse me, I lied. That doesn't put him in the top of the overall rankings. Or my block didn't uh, update or something, but uh, We're still I do waiting believe for, he's... For confirmed time, yeah, so. but I, I do believe he moves to the top of the overall rankings after that. But Andrea Rossi, had uh, he had a tough log here. Got that axe caught a couple of times there. Here's the first side for Marcel Dupuy. Really careful to step around those blocks and chips on the floor. And nice big slabs coming out there. Big blows there by Andrea Rossi. And this, I mean, you could see big slabs coming off. You can see the nails at the top of the block as well. Those are there so that the top doesn't slab out and make it uh, easier for these athletes. They want to make sure that uh, everything stays fair. Here's Andrea Rossi moving over to the other side. So let's take a look. There it is, Marcel Dupuy on top with a 1906. And Andrea Rossi with his time of 25-12 is uh, seventh place at the moment in standing block. And that puts uh, Marcel Dupuy just ahead of Kern Martins and Mika Dubicki in the overall standings. And I believe Lisa is All right. next to Thank Marcel. you guys. I'm here with Marcel. That was incredible. I mean, I saw the axe was, something was holding on to it. Uh, always, at, uh, as like Troy said. Can you walk us through a little bit? Um, how did you feel it? Yeah, like uh, the front side of the block went well. Uh, when I got to the back side, it was full of knots. So I cut through a few knots, bent my axe, and uh, it was a harder time to, to, uh, to break the, the block apart. But it is what it is. I did the best I could. You did an amazing job, and I'm hoping you're doing well. Yeah, we'll see. Like, I had that DQ in the, in the stocks also. It kind of set me back, so now i got to tighten my belt and uh, get to work. Hopefully I can make it to the next step, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes from there. So, I wish you all the best. So now, back to the studio. He's got to tighten his belt. <laughs> like yeah, that. that's such a Canadian thing. Hey, i got to tighten my belt and work harder. Uh, and trust me, he's going to do it. He'll do it, absolutely. All right, heat number five of six, Armin Kugler up against Martin Komarek. Here's a couple of old battle-scarred veterans going up against each other. Love to see this one. Some focus right there from Martin Komarek. Is this his year? Okay, he has gentlemen. been good all season long. Athlete, Let's see. Ready, stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Points wise, Martin Komarek is the top athlete of the 10 European athletes participating here today. He's been so consistent, but Armin Kugler is very, very strong in this discipline as he slips a hand but moves over to the other side quickly. Martin Komarek is over there as well. It's going to be a close one between these two, but it looks like Martin Komarek's got it. Oh. And in 1898, good job by Martin Komarek. Oh, and Kugler, he skipped it a little bit. He's got a bit of an outside edge and finally drops it in 25.97. So uh, that puts him in 12th place in the overall standings, but Martin Komarek moves into the top position. Very impressive again. So great job by the ever-consistent Martin Komarek to do uh, what he needed to do on stage there. It's not a okay, bad time. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. 1871, first in standing block chop, and now first overall. And, and this, this is a great is position for him to be in because there's only one more heat to go. And uh, that one more heat isn't going to... I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen He'll is Martin Komarek will end up in third place here. What a man. Look at that though, hey? I mean, just absolutely fantastic. His dedication and devotion to this sport 
for the Czech Republic and for the European side of things is just amazing. Armin Kugler also no slouch, but I think maybe... Well, he started off very well, but then on the other, you know, after the switch of sides... Well, he was over to the other side Kremis. before yeah. uh, Martin Komarik was, and it could be the situation there where he got into a couple of knots on the backside. I mean, like I said, these blocks are chosen fairly, but there's always the possibility there's going to be a knot in there. Well, it's a nature product, yeah. you know, and, it's, and when it's the knots, not artificial. Yeah, we can't do anything about it, and when the knots are in there, they're in there, and that makes it harder to cut. I just find it hard to believe that these axes get bent, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's but that's how sharp they are. <laughs> but it's a bit like skiing, you know, yeah. make over one small stone, you know. And yeah, the yeah, edges and your are... wax job is done for yep. Yeah. But how impressive is that man? He's been on that level for so many years and he's showing the youngsters yeah. again how things are working. For him. And look at the time difference, 35 hundredths of a second from Comerick to Dupuy. Let's take a look at the overall standings. Kern Martin slips down one notch into third place. Marcel Dupuy holds on to now in second place and Martin Comerick at the top of the standings. Yeah, but three, four and five, all with 20 points. So, yeah. But check this out, Jason Lenz, this is his discipline. Oh yeah, this look is at the absolutely his discipline. Whew. He's always the kick man when it comes to the team competition on the standing block chop. Barry Swan, no slouch with an 1817 personal best, but look at the personal best of Jason Lentz, 1542. And if you watch Jason Lentz's stance, he's a big man, you know, like six foot four, six foot five. He'll step back, spread those legs way apart, push off that back leg, and just put drivers okay, into that block gentlemen. like you won't believe. Watch this. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, you can, uh, you, you can even feel it here in the yeah. studio. You the can feel it in the studio. Over. Yeah, the whole Woo. place is just vibrating. But look how accurate those cuts are from Ferry Swan. Brilliant, brilliant. And he's been working on this. And look at Jason Lentz. He's close. He's really close. Ferry Swan, not that far behind. Two more blows. One more blow for Jason Lentz as he swings from the outfield with a 1907 personal best. Ah, I'm sorry, that's no personal best for Jason Lentz. In 1907, he's got a 1542 personal best, so timing there was a little bit wacky according to our list, but uh, Ferry Swan, he uh, was not that far behind, but Jason Lentz, let's see, his time was 1998 with adjustment. Ferry Swan was just ahead of him with a 19.40. So that was a close battle between these two guys, both of them under 27. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. So guess who stays on top of the pack after the standing block chop? Hmm, Mr. Martin Komarek. Yeah, look at those pieces of wood, those chips flying off that block. Fairy Swan digging deep, those big pressing pushes off that back leg. And there you see the axe of Jason Lentz. It was wiggling there, and this final one just out for left field. Goes for it. Some motivation for these guys, and uh, here comes... Oh, that was a massive stick by Ferry Swan as he tries to wedge that one out. All right, so standing block chop, we have Martin Komarik on top with Jason Lentz, a new personal best. Although I'm not sure about that personal best because based on the list that we saw earlier, he had a 15 personal best, or maybe my eyes are just so bad that I can't read it properly. In the overall standings, Jason Lentz makes a huge jump up into second place, and Ferry Swan is in third place with Marcel Dupuy in fourth, and Mika Dupiki in fifth place. So our overall standings are shifting around quite significantly. And uh, yeah, so there's some changes in how everything is going here. Absolutely, and only eight athletes uh, make it to round number two. Uh, yep. I'm afraid Armin Kugler is not there. Armin ist sich leider nicht ausgegangen, yep. in Runde zwei zu gehen. Du hast doch jetzt am Ende den Kopf geschüttelt, du hast super gestartet. Und, und dann nach dem Wechsel auf die andere Seite ist es einfach nicht mehr gelaufen. Was ist da passiert? Ja, es, der Block hat der bei Este. Die waren aber gar nicht so hart. Das war eher, es hat mich eher irritiert und habe zwei, drei Fehlschläge gehabt und ja, dann ein bisschen zu viel riskiert, zu viel Holz noch stehen gehabt vor dem Drive und 
sich leider nicht ausgegangen. Aber ich glaube, das ist genau das, diese Kleinigkeiten, ja, die auf diesem Top-Level, auf dem wir uns bewegen, entscheidend sind. Oder da geht es eben falsches Einschätzen, vielleicht eine Spur zu schnell lange zögern und das macht den Unterschied. Ja, genau so ist Man muss einfach alles riskieren. Man kann nicht einfach zusätzlich zwei Schläge von unten machen, um genug Holz rauszuchippen. Man, man versucht einfach so viel wie möglich mit den letzten drei Schlägen durchzudriven. Ähm, ja, und das kann halt dann schief gehen, dann braucht es dann drei, vier, fünf extra Schläge und dann ist die Zeit natürlich komplett im Keller. So, so I've been uh, talking to Armin about the small differences or, or the small things that make the big differences on that level that we are competing here at the, at the World Championships and uh, that, that's what makes the big difference. And, and Armin said, you know, he had a great start. So, On the other side, he felt some knots in the wood, but it would not have been that bad. But it made him think, it made him go for another stroke that might not have been necessary. And of course, uh, at the end of the day, that's the difference not to make it to round number two. And, and, and Troy, I mean, you've been watching the whole procedure. Yeah. I mean, had a great start in every of the, one of those rounds. Yeah, and I called it on that block as well. When he went to the other side, I saw, you know, it was just a little bit slower on the backside. And I thought, okay, maybe there's some knots back there. And uh, I mean, I mean, c confirmed it. Uh, there were some knots and it just makes, you know, it makes the headspace change a little bit for these guys. Uh, and uh, that's the tough break, unfortunately. I'm sorry to be yeah. out of the competition at this point. Hat es trotzdem Spaß gemacht, hier wieder eine echte Weltmeisterschaft zu haben in einem sehr, sehr schwierigen Jahr 2021? Ja, sicher. Jeder Bewerb ist super, den wir haben. Natürlich auch die Wettkampferfahrung. Man ist heuer nicht so im Modus, aber das sollen alles keine Ausreden sein. Hier ist alles perfekt angerichtet. Dem steht nichts im Wege. Und äh, du bist natürlich dann hoffentlich nächstes Jahr dann auch wieder dabei und äh, wirst gemeinsam mit uns wieder rocken. Auf jeden Fall, wenn wir wieder alles geben. Dann schauen wir uns gemeinsam äh, Tool and Discipline an. We're going to take a closer look at Tool and Discipline of the first uh, Round 2 Competition. And that's coming up right away. Vielen Dank. The two meter long cross cut ja, saw used for the ja. single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about five kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc of a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. So here are our eight remaining athletes for the single buck. Severin Bühler taking on Pierre Puberet in heat number one. Heat number two, consisting of Köhn Martens and Michael Dubicki. In heat three, we'll see Marcel Depuy take on Ferris Mann. And finally, in heat number four, it will be Jason Lenz taking on Martin Komarek. Severin Bühler going up against Pierre Puy Barre. Now, Pierre Puy Barre is quite strong in this discipline. Excuse me. Um, we saw Severin Bühler also looking very good in the Swiss Championship on this discipline, but the question is, will he be able to hold pace with Pierre Puyabare? Now, this is the misery whip for a reason. That's the nickname <laughs> of this particular saw, that two okay, meter gentlemen. long cross cut saw we just heard about. Uh, you gotta Ready. have the flow going Stand and keep it going. Timber. If that thing stops, you're in deep Three, trouble. Two, one, go. And we're going to see different styles here as well as these guys have different ways of starting. Some will go for those choppy shortcuts right off the bat. And you can see right away, Pierre Puy Barre is really deep into it. And he's got himself a great... What? Oh! What? Is that true? Is that true? An 11.82 would be a world record here. <laughs> and that means the, the world record from, uh, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Ferry Swan of 12.01 just fell through the floor from... Pierre Puy Barre, wow! <laughs> Let's see, it's got to be confirmed yet. They're going to do a, a video <laughs> check on it and everything. But if that's the case, we have a new world record right here at the World Championships. Everyone taking their time now. Yeah, this Pressure is where it is gets building to be up. a little bit too much. Is it a world record or uh, is it not? Okay, congratulations. 
Both cuts are good. 11.58 would mean it is a world record and he has beat Ferry Swan's time of 12.01. Now, we have to also point out that this is without assistance. Yep. Okay, because the world record was set without assistance by Ferry Swan. Uh, so that is the difference maker here between where there's one guy on stage with wedge and, and uh, wedge and wax, let's call it. Uh, but that was a great cut. And by the way, we shouldn't miss out on, on giving the fact that Severin Buehler also just had a personal yeah. best here. We don't want to overshadow the fact that he's made improvements of three of the four dis disciplines so far in this competition. Full respect so that's to that really man. a great job by Severin Buehler. Big, big, big respect. But how cool was that scoreboard? Yeah. Personal best, seasonal best, yeah. and a world record. The difference here is look at the difference in the thickness of the cookies between these two guys. Severin Buehler had quite a bit thicker cookie, and that binds on the saw a lot more. And Pierre Puy-Barré, his was very thin, and he was very intelligent about how he set that saw up on top of the block to make sure that he had a thin cookie. The risk there is, though, that when you get down to the bottom of that cut, if the angle is a bit wrong or if the saw bows a little bit, you could break the cookie off, and then you have to go back and cut that last bit to make it a fair cookie. So Pierre Puy-Barré sets the standard for single buck with a world record in the single buck without help of 11.58. Severin Buehler, a personal best of 20.08. And we move on to our next heat with Kern Martins going up against Mikael Dubicki. all the preparation time for these guys so important to make sure they've got everything exactly as they want it for their cut okay gentlemen buying everything up that was great athletes Here ready we go. stand to your timber three two one go Getting right into it. Oh, ah. Kern Martins gets a bit of a hook up there. That is costly with Mika Dubicki keeping the flow going. He's oh, using Dubicki that entire strong. saw. Oh, he broke it off. He's got to get back on there and cut that last little bit. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier on. He just had a little bit too much pressure. The angle up was a bit too much. He blew that disc off, but he did go back and cut that last little bit off. That so because he did that, best. it should be a fair cut they will check that to make sure but i don't think there's any argument here that he's got a good cookie yeah but he of course will not have the personal best but kern martins once again got himself a personal best yeah good job i don't think we can call this block a melon like uh, yolanda okay, calls it but uh, these guys are doing great <laughs> both cuts are good all right happy to see that miko dubicki's cut was in fact good at the end of the day he was smart enough to go back there and get that cut but you saw that thing blew off, the saw came well away, so he had to, had to take up that whip of a saw and put it back in position for this little tiny tooth of wood. And meanwhile, Kern Martins, he had a bit of a hookup at the start in the early goings here, but managed to still get a personal best out of it. So you gotta love the gumption and the gusto that Kuhn Martins is giving this event here today. He's had personal bests already a couple of times around, so that's a great job by him. Ah. Oh, there's that huge explosion. Watch what happens with the saw. He's got to reposition that beast in right on the spot to get that little tooth off. That is, mm. as they say in German, ärgerlich. Yeah? That's very ärgerlich indeed. <laughs> and that's the explosive power right there of Mikael Dubicki. You can see just putting everything into it. He had great flow at that point as well. Like you said, it would have been another personal best for him, but unfortunately that little mistake at the end, just a bit too much power. The saw whips out and breaks the piece off, causing And look at problems. that, he's still in second position, even yeah, though I mean, he had to go back and cut off that small piece. Yeah, that says Full a lot respect. right there. So in the overall standings, nothing really changes among the top three there. 
And, uh, but it very soon will. <laughs> it very soon will. Uh, so Severin Bueller is down in sixth place. Remember, the top six guys are the ones that are moving on to the stock saw round. Marcel Dupuis going up against Ferry Swan now. Now, Ferry Swan, as we know, is very good in this discipline, having previously held the world record until today. Uh, Marcel Dupuis, also very good in this discipline. And you can see Marcel Dupuis is wearing these mega spikes. No, Ferry Swan is wearing those mega spikes. Those are his boots right there. Look at those things. That's some serious ice climbing equipment he's got <laughs> on there, it looks like. Yeah, and of course, uh, in his world, he wants to get back the world record. Yes. Okay, gentlemen. Look at the stance on Ferry Swan athletes, as well. Ready. Stand to your timber. So if you watch Three, the style between two, these two guys, one, go. Ferry Swan will get in with a couple of short, quick cuts and then start to use the entire length of the saw. Marcel Dupuis, he's powerful enough to be able to get right at it with the whole saw. But Ferry Swan looking good. Oh, it's going to come close to it, but it's not a record. 12.46, Marcel Dupuis, a personal best at 13. Remembering this is without help. So good job by Marcel Dupuis as uh, the assistants on stage come in to grab those saws so the guys can come up to the front with Andy Hall and get the results of their cuts. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. You know what I'm loving here, though? In the competition of single bucks so far, we've had a world record and three personal bests. Marcel <laughs> Dupuis, wow. one of those guys with a personal best, and he is currently sitting in third place in single buck. And uh, we'll take a look back at the replay here really quickly and then get a look at the standings. And look at the concentration on Marcel right there. So he has started off actually surprisingly. I, I Usually he goes for those full long strokes right off the bat. Ferry Swan, look at this, one, two, three, four, five. Short strokes off the stop, off the top, excuse me, and then gets into using the whole saw. And you can see how oh, quickly that's magic. going through there. That's Just magic. look at that. I mean, that is motor saw speed right there. <laughs> it seems like it. Fantastic. You're absolutely right. And here is where that core strength plays such a huge role. I mean, you got to have grip strength as well, but the core strength to really move that saw back and forth is so, so, so important. And you can also see that the stance of Ferry Swan, he had such a wide stance that he pushes off of that back leg with just more or less his toes. <laughs> I you like know, you so doing really it. It's, gotta, yeah. it's a shame my viewers can't see you <laughs> through those movements. And I mean, Ferry has to be very happy with that second position in the single buck. He moves into first in the overall standings as we move on to heat number four. Yeah. And that's another massive one. Jason Lentz versus Martin Comerick. Yeah, Jason Lenz and Martin Komarek going at battle again. Jason Lenz needs a 12.71 for the lead overall, and uh, Martin Komarek needs a 15.92. So Martin Komarek's got the advantage okay, here gentlemen. against Lenz. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. <laughs> Three, two, <laughs> one, go! And there you see Jason Lenz straight away with the long strokes. Martin Komarek opts in for short three four five short strokes like ferry swan did but lens using that oh, entire that's saw that's to his advantage and komarek actually gets in a bit of trouble there and it is a personal best for lens with a 1318 and for komarek with a 1406 so again wow. another couple of personal bests dropping by the wayside love it love it love it so that's eight athletes with six personal bests and one of these personal bests of course is a, is world, a world record, record. yeah wow amazing so Pierre Puy Barret can be happy about that one, a world record without assistance in the single bucket. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. Jason Lenz, single buck, fourth place. Martin Komarek right behind him in fifth place. We'll take a look at how that uh, switches everything around in the overall standing shortly here. And trust me, this is going to be so close in yeah. the top three. But oh, let's uh, take it this, look at the slowmos first. So there you see those quick starting strokes from Martin Komarek, and then he gets into using that entire length of the saw. And that's a critical point there. You want to use the entire length of the saw because then you have the more efficient cuts, as you can see. Now, when he got down towards the bottom half of that disc, he started to slow down a little bit. And I don't know if that was because he was running out of steam or because he ran into something. 
Uh, but the angle just wasn't there for him. And you could see Jason Lentz, that saw was disappearing into the wood. And that last cut was just a quick pull by him and he is out and done. Yeah, and there's Martin Comrie. He's grimacing. So I don't know if he is feeling a little bit of pain here in this particular discipline. It's not going to hurt him that badly in the overall standings. He's still in a solid position to make it into the final with one more discipline to go here in round two. Let's well, take a look at the rankings here when they come up in single buck. So there we go. Pierre Puy Barre with the world records. Congratulations again. Yeah, big deal there. And uh, Ferry Swan sitting in second place in the overall standings. There's Just the shift. One point between Jason the top three. Lentz. Can you believe wow. it? 39, 39, 38, 34. Wow, that's. Uh, that's the competition right there for you. It's just fantastic. You know, these guys are rocking and rolling right now. And we've seen a lot of juggling in the overall rankings. Jason Lenz, maybe a little bit uh, jet lag. Started off not so strong, but he's coming on with some steam power now. And, and like we mentioned, only one point between the top three. And we're going to take a closer look at the two fastest men, Puberet and Swan. Head to head, side by side. Let's see. So here we see Puy Barre starts with his big long strokes, Ferry Swan, those short strokes to get things going, and then he gets into those long strokes once he's there. But look at the power and speed by both of these guys. It looks faster by Ferry Swan because he's actually moving the saw faster, but it was a more efficient cut by Pierre Puy Barre, and that shows by the final result there with a world record for Pierre Puy Barre. So great job for the Frenchman taking down that world record that was held by Ferry Swan previously. I was just going to say, the old record, there you go. world record holder against the new record. The record holder in the side-by-side, -side. and uh, it was a really good opportunity to see those two different styles at work, and both of them are advantage. And, and, and talking about uh, Ferry Swan, of course, he's going to be very happy that next year we're going to have the individual world championships oh, in yes. Gothenburg, Sweden. How about that? We can announce it today officially. We're going to have the individual world championships in Sweden next good to year. Go. Gothenburg, do not miss it. Twenty-eighth and twenty-ninth of October. Have you written it down yet? Put it into your phone. Booked. At one man is very, very happy about that fact, and yep. that of course is Ferris Swan. Yes. Hello, Timber Sport fans around the world. Ferris Swan here from Sweden. As you just seen, the World Championship 2022 will be held in my home country in Sweden next year. This will be super exciting, and all I can say is. Get your ticket for a world championship in Gothenburg. Come to Sweden and cheer on your nation. We see you in October 2022. Well, I'm definitely going to be yeah. there. So is Troy. And the springboard is next. All you need to know about the springboards. Here we go. Springboard. Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees, climbing up over thick roots. First, notches known as pockets are chopped into the log. Two springboards are then anchored into these pockets. The athlete then climbs up to chop through a 27 centimeter thick block of wood in the fastest time possible. And here are the starters of Heat 1. Severin Bühle against Pierre Puberet. In Heat 2, we'll see Kern Martins take on Michal Dubicki. In Heat 3, it will be Marcel Depuy against Ferry Swan. And finally, in Heat 4, Jason Lenz will take on Martin Komarek. All right, so springboard Heat number 1, Severin Bühle against Pierre Puberet. Now, here's where the size of the guys can play a role. Not always will, 
but can play a role. The lighter athlete will have the advantage of getting up onto the springboard and being able to utilize that springboard to his advantage. The heavier athlete, however, when the springboard is placed okay, correctly, gentlemen. will have a better time athlete, cutting that ready. block off of the Stand top. Here we to go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Pierre Puybaret looking for a solid, I think that was maybe four hits to get that first pocket in place. And here we see the first, the first board isn't so super, super important. It is important, naturally, to get up there and be able to have good footing to set the second pocket. But this second pocket for him was about six, seven hits, and he gets that one in. Now watch what happens here. We're going to see a bit of sag in that board. So that board is just below 90 degrees, and that's going to cause him problems. Meanwhile, Severin Buehler on the other side is already up on top of his board. He's got a halfway decent place board. The angle's not awesome, but he is really working deeply into that first side. So he's got the advantage at this point against the bigger man in Pierre Puy Barre. Now, because Pierre Puy Barre's board is sagging a bit more due to his, his weight on that board and the fact that, you know, he didn't really have that steep angle, he's got to step in closer to the block, means he doesn't have as much power in those strokes, and that means that he's going to have to choke up on the axe a lot more, which means that his time will be a little bit slower. Severin Brule, in the meantime, has dropped his block in 110 double O. And guess what? And that's what? a personal best. Great <laughs> job by Severin. He has just been improving from the get-go. Great job. And Pierre Puy Barre manages to get it down to 110 68. So 68 hundredths of a second slower. And, uh, you know, good start to the springboard competition. This this is like, uh, you know, this is the kitty cat competition, we call it. Uh, you know, it's a little bit finicky. Not quite as finicky as the hot saw, perhaps, but uh, you really have so many things going on in this. You know, you've got to set the pockets. You've got to set the boards. You've got to be up two meters plus above the ground to make sure that uh, you can really okay, get that block in the top worked in a, in, a, in a good way. So, you know, 109, 110 after the adjustments. So good times for both of these guys. Not awesome times, but, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. You've you got to roll with the punches. Yeah, and speaking of Severin Bühler, I mean, he is such a tremendous surprise to me today yeah. with getting one personal best after the other. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Full respect to that man. That second pocket set by Pierre Puy Barre just took a little bit too long. I think he was about six, seven hits to get there and uh, finally got it in. And, and uh, Severin Bühler obviously really likes this discipline or maybe he hates it but he just wants to get it over with quicker so that's why he's good at it as long as it works yeah whatever works right here's the difficult part part for these guys is getting on that backside that weird angle choking up on the saw or on the axe excuse me and uh, you know trying to hit from the backside you can see in the far end of the picture there Severin Bühler taking a couple three strokes just to get through the backside a little bit of a slip there that could have been disastrous but he controlled the axe and then finally gets that block down in an official time of 109.84 after adjustment. And except for the underhand shot, Severin Bula has set the personal best in each and every, every single, single discipline. discipline. But we did say right off the top that he wasn't the strongest in underhand chop, so he has shown improvement through all of these other disciplines, which is for me fantastic because it tells me no that he is that. He's not here just to, to, you know, say, hey, I made it, you know. <laughs> He's here to compete and really put some pressure on these guys. So in springboard, Severin Brühler at the moment, top of the blocks. And we'll take a look at the overall standings. He moves up into fifth place. So he is on the bubble at the moment. Uh, oh, he's yeah. in a bit of a rough spot there. We're going to see some good times come up. So maybe Severin Brühler gets knocked down in, the, in below sixth place. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, so the overall standings will stay on a little bit longer here, and we're going to check out one of our partners now.
So it's heat two between Kuhn Martins and Michal Dupiki. Okay, <laughs> let's call a spade a spade here. Kuhn Martins struggled in this discipline all season long. He's gotten through it by virtue of his tenacity and his ability just to push away all the demons. Mika Dubiki, he's a big boy, and this has been his advantage and his disadvantage in this discipline as well because he's had some good uh, boards, but he's also had some pretty cheap boards up there. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two come together in this heat. And uh, I'm just uh, I'm crossing my fingers. Okay, for gentlemen. I kind of have a feeling Andre, that this is going to be a fantastic heat. To your timber. I think so too. Looking at a four hit Three, pocket for both two, of them is optimal. One. Go! Full concentration. So that's five hits for Kuhn Martin to get that first board in. Pay attention to the angle there. Looking pretty solid. Don't know where Dubicki is at at the moment, but uh, Kuhn Martin's now aiming for getting that second pocket in position, and he's got another five hit pocket on that one. Taking a little bit longer for Mika Dubicki to get that second pocket in place. Now, look at the board angle for Kuhn Martins. It's 90 degrees and not quite sagging, but Kuhn Martins has the advantage of being on that top block. Now, if Mika Dubicki can get a steep angle on that board, he can utilize his power from the back end of the board better than Kuhn Martins can. And Kuhn Martins opting to go to the backside fairly quickly. Let's see if that's to his advantage. It looks good for him. And uh, we may see Kuhn Martins get under a minute. No, he's going to go back to the front side. Maybe one more blow. Uh, come on, Kuhn. You can do it, buddy. Oh, it's just passing over the minute mark there. And it's one thread that's just holding on for dear life. 104.88 for Kern Martins, and he shrugs that one off. 108.66 for Dubicki, so Kern Martins, I'm really sorry, he didn't slay the dragon here on this one, but he came really close to getting under a minute on that one. I don't think many people have managed to do that this year, and we have a flag on the play with a video check on stand B, and that is on the stand for Mika Dubicki. Don't know what it's about, but usually a video check refers to wrenching. Okay, so we make a so video let's see. Check for possible wrenching yep, on there you go. B. So what wrenching means is when the athlete gets that final close to the end blow, and instead of having a clean cut through, they will twist the axe, and instead of cutting through, the twist of the axe is what will break it off the top. Now, if they do determine it was wrenching for Mickey Dubicki at the end, then that means that he will be in a bit of trouble here because that will be a DQ and no points for him in this one. Now, that's the action that they're talking about. The question is, was it so early on or was it a result of the final blow? It doesn't look like it was a result of the final blow, so I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one here. Yeah, I think that's So deep conversations from Jörg Kurzenberger and Andy Hall there as they look at the super slow-mos of Mika Dubicki when he was on his second board. Yeah, I get it. I think that's fine. And the tension mounts as they return to the stage. Now, what will the end result be? Okay, we make a video check for possible wrenching on stand B. However, both cuts are good. Oh, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> Did you see that fist yep. bump of relief from Mika Dubicki? Yeah, yeah, you can see that. <laughs> and there's, some, there's a big a smile of relief. smile, yeah. yes. <laughs> that's something you don't see from the Polish man very often. Not on when, stage, anyway. No, when you do, when you do, I tell you what, it's a, it's a big smile. And, and I think Kern Martins will be smiling as well. Yeah, he, He's on sure. top of the pack at the moment. Yeah. And only two hits to go. Kern Martins, I mean, the, the, the perfect situation for anybody doing the springboard is four hit pocket, board in, four hit pocket, board in, and quick through the top. I mean, We're talking Sterling, about Sterling Hart. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Sterling Hart with the world record that he got back in 2016. It's going to be a long time before anybody breaks 35, 67, 35 seconds. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. just nuts. It's like under 36 seconds. We've watched it together and it's unreal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, and I mean, Kern Martins right here. This, this one, he was just at about the 55 second mark, and he had to go back to the front side and then finally blew through it, but he was just over the minute mark, and I really feel bad for him because it would have been great to see him get under a minute on that. 
<laughs> there you go, Coon Martin's happy about that though. Fast time top of the springboard so far. And there's a couple of guys that are really happy to be done with that discipline right there. So let's take a look at the rankings in springboard. Remembering we only have eight athletes. We're gonna get rid of two, the bottom two after springboard is done. So the overall rankings, Pierre Puy-Barré still on top. Mika Dubicki holding on to second place. And Jason Lentz just in third. But look at the, the, the score there, 44, 39, 39, 39. That's close from two to fourth position. It's amazing. So we are ready for the next heat. And of course, uh, like we say, Kern Martin's in the lead in the springboard at the moment. Yep. Uh, next up are Marcel Dupuis and Ferry Swan. Uh, who would you favor in that uh, heat? Um, to be honest with you, Marcel Dupuis. Ferry Swan, he's a slight guy. He's very good in this discipline, but we've seen Marcel Dupuis be surprisingly agile for a big man. He gets those boards placed really well. He gets up on the good angle. So if he can hold on to what he knows how to do in this particular discipline, then I think he's going to beat Ferry Swan. But you know what? It's anybody's <laughs> game out there. And as we know, Ferry Swan, he is that guy that's always analyzing the little bits and pieces here to make sure that he is really on point for these competitions. And it is the World Championship. So. Let's find out. Let's take a closer look at our double graphic of our two competitors. Marcel Depuis versus Ferry Swan. 110 Ks against 86 kilograms. 35 against 24 if you consider the age. And the height, 180 against 178. So that's... Uh, Not really difference. It's the weight that plays more than anything. But and both the of these guys have very close together personal well. bests that are close together under a minute. But still... I kind of think that Marcel Dupuis is going to do this one. Well, so I'm going to go with Ferry Swan. Okay. And it's Rochambeau for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Heat number three. Marcel okay, Dupuis, Ferry Swan, getting ready. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Four hit pocket for Dupuis. Look at the angle on that board. That's near perfect. Yeah, he's opting for it. He's going to go for it. He's got a four-hit pocket on number two. Does he get that board in place cleanly? Ferry Swan struggling to get that second board in place. He's got a bit of an angle on there. And Ferry Swan, uh, boy, he's standing really close to the knuckle on that one. Marcel Dupuis is on his second board, but look at the board that's sagging a little bit there. And both of these guys working on that top block now, just passing the 35-second mark. Marcel Dupuis has the advantage of power in this case because both of them are standing really close to the knuckle of their board and just using their upper body for those swings to get through that first side. And now it's a question of who is going to get through first. Ferry Swan is still working on the first side. Marcel Dupuis just passing 55 seconds. It looks like he's getting close to knocking it off. And he does it in under a minute. Marcel Dupuis, holy smokes, he's got to jump down from that <laughs> two meter height. Look at that, 59-53. I really hope they don't uh, DQ him for a jump down like that. They shouldn't. I don't believe there's anything in the rules, but Ferry Swan with a 113-36. Marcel Dupuis with arguably the fastest time of the day with uh, under a minute at 59-53. So close to the minute mark. Great job by the Canadian. But did he jump off because he wanted to? Or did he I jump off because so. he had to? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe I think the slow-mo is going to show He up. knocked that block off, and I think that the the, 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 the follow-through on the axe just took him over to the side of the board. And, I mean, luckily he's got powerful legs. Otherwise, that uh, drop okay, down to the ground at two meters might have hurt. Cuts are good. That's great. Uh, yeah. Nice job by Marcel Dupuis. So that gets him in better standings and uh, – Gets him back in the top of the overall rankings. And we take a look at the review here really quickly. So Marcel 
That first pocket was a four hit pocket. I countered them with the, uh, the drops here. Up goes the axe, in goes the board. That first board was actually really nice. Look at the angle he's got there. Barely any sag at all. He did have a four hit second pocket, but he almost looked like he was second guessing that second pocket as he put his board in place, but he felt confident enough to get on it. But to be honest with you, neither of these two guys had a really optimal second board. They were both a little bit flat, a little bit saggy, so they had to choke up on the axe and step closer to the block. But Marcel Dupuis just putting everything into it, and there you see, it was the follow through, and he just didn't have anywhere to go. And luckily, oh, wow. that block that came off the top wasn't in his way when he came down, or that could have been a major ankle injury. Look at this, yep. And boy, the power in his legs, though, jumping down from two meters up. Uh, hello? With that is razor sharp. Is he a free runner as well? Axe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do they call it in French? Parkour? Parkour, yeah. I, I was just missing that roll at the end, you know? Yeah. Yeah, or the, uh, the Hong Kong twist, you know? <laughs> yeah. Flip and twist in the air. <laughs> All right, so look at that. What a great time by, my, by Marcel Dupuis. And again, my Canadian pride rises in my chest to see that. Kern Martin still second place here. And um, one more heat to go with Jason Lentz and Martin Komarek, who are sitting in fourth and fifth place at the moment. Marcel Dupuis moves back up into the top spot with Ferry Swan in second place. So great job by these guys so far, and the action awesome. continues to get better and better. And, and, and you know, like you said, they are improving and improving. And what do you need to improve? A training camp. Yeah. And we had one this week, so yes, take we a did. closer look at this. No wonder these guys are so good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> training camps help everybody, right? So springboard heat number four, Jason Final Lentz heats. up against Martin Komarek. Couple of big boys here. Martin Komarek's personal best is a really solid 42.96. So that uh, is solid indeed. That is definitely solid. Jason Lentz's personal best uh, I don't have here, but for the lead, he needs a 108.42. That's being the overall lead, mm -hmm. by the way. And the funny thing is, uh, for the lead, they both need a 108.42 at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Martin Komarek has the advantage of so many years of experience with this particular discipline. Um, the other thing that's nice that we mentioned uh, in, in several other shows is that the rookie competitions okay, now have springboard in the mix so that they're not quite such a shock coming in Athlete, like these ready. guys had Stand back in the day. So here we timber. go. Three, two, one, go! That's Taking six hits. His time, huh? That's six hits for Martin Komarek. I think Jason Lenz actually had it in four, maybe just five. Lenz get that second board in. This is the key board for him now. He needs to get up there. I want to see that angle. If uh, yeah, Jason Lenz has got a pretty good angle. So does Martin Komarek, though. And those are, I guess, I'm gonna say about as optimal as it gets. Both of them up there at the two meter mark with those axes. Lenz's board is starting to sag a little bit. He's got to be careful there. Martin Komarek's got a second board that's really solid. Lenz has got the power, though. Can he get through there? Komarek has moved over to the other side of his. Lenz now moved over to the other side of his as well. Oh, it's going to be a good one for Whoa. Martin Komarek. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
51 52 to 51 82. And that I is a personal best believe it. for Jason Lentz with a bullet. Nice job by both of those guys. Really fantastic times. <laughs> and Marcel Dupuis, I'm really sorry, buddy, but your time just got blasted by 7.82 seconds. Unbelievable effort by these two guys in that final heat. And that means Martin Komarek or Jason Lins, one of the others, should move to the top of the overall ranking. Komarek be by Komarek. one point. Yep. Unbelievable. Ah. Jason Lins with the personal best. Martin Komarek taking the win in the springboard. Okay, congratulations. Both cuts are good. Love those personal bests. Just love them. So Jason Lins with a fantastic effort there on the springboard. And it is, I mean, there's so many things going on with that particular discipline. You know, you got to set the pockets, you got to have the angles right. If the angle isn't correct, then you're going to have that mindset of, oh, things are wiggling around too much. You don't have a solid positioning up there. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a scary situation if you're not feeling 100% confident. But both of these guys look absolutely fantastic up there. So how this wow, uh, Komarek? Wow, was that? <laughs> I, I, so let, me, let, me, let me find out here. I can't I'm believe this man. He's been on this top level for so many years. Yeah. Season for season. And he's rocking the individual world championships again. He's in the lead before we go into the hot saw. Yep. And that is absolutely fantastic. Sorry, I aged him by five years. He's 44 years old. What a man. Awesome. Bam. And that's what positivity will get you right there, oh, yeah. you know? Stay positive, stay smiling, stay relaxed, and uh, you can do good things with it. That is so very impressive. It can change the world. It changed his world, as we see. So springboard Martin Komarek with an amazing season's best 51-22. So that would be a, a national record for him. Jason Lentz with a personal best of 51-55, really close together. And look at that. Komarek, Lenz, Dupuis, 1, 2, 3, Ferry, Swan, Puy, Barre, 4 and 5, and Mika Dubicki in position number 6. Hey. And we just uh, seen Severin Bula just not uh, making it uh, to the hot saw, and Elise is standing right next to him. I'm wondering, has he has a smile on his face, or is he very disappointed? We'll find <laughs> out in just a moment. Hi, Severin. Danke, dass wir dich interviewen dürfen. Das war das erste Mal bei den Einzelweltmeisterschaften. Trotzdem super, super gemacht. Wir wissen alle, es ist ein großer Druck. Kannst du uns vielleicht so ein bisschen über das erste Erlebnis erzählen? Ja, es ist natürlich heute, wie du gesagt hast, ein großer Druck, ähm, da man das eigene Land vertreten darf von einer Weltmeisterschaft. Ähm, ja, möchte man ja eine möglichst gute Leistung bringen. Und ähm, ich bin eigentlich heute mit meiner Leistung sehr zufrieden. Ich glaube, ich habe das zeigen können, was ich, was ich, was ich kann. Und, und ja, somit bin ich sehr zufrieden. Ja. So, he's telling me that, of course, it's a lot of pressure, but he's happy to represent his country and he's pretty happy about his performance. And I think that's everything you could ask for. And uh, thank you so much and wish you all the best. Danke. All right, back to the studio. And from Hopp Schwitz uh, to <laughs> Kern Martins, who jumped into our studio. Jumped, literally. Hello. With a big smile in his face. You had a great competition, but you just missed the hot cell by getting seventh at the moment. Yes, uh, my goal was um, for sure to put a national record on. Um, I think I hit two, like the underhand and single book. Single book could be better. There's always a little bit pointers, but I'm happy. Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, I mean, two personal bests yeah. at the individual world championships. That's something we all just celebrate. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. We love the personal bests. And uh, obviously, we were rooting for you out there. What was the difference maker out there for you? Where do you think it was uh, a little bit sour on the day? Um, I think the stock saw killed me in the beginning. It was like, yeah. It was not my favorite event for this season, so it's, it's, it's always, yeah, I don't know. We'll train a lot and um, we hope for the best next week and, uh, like, uh, next season. So, um, yeah, it's always the pressure is on. They're the best guys in the world. What can you expect? You have to be pressure on and then yep. let's go. Yeah, we saw you struggling a little bit previously in the season with the springboard. We were yelling and screaming in here because you were so close to being under a minute on the springboard here. It was just a thread away. 
And I mean, I feel really bad that it didn't happen, but you had a great springboard today nevertheless. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Could be better, but there's always the same story. But uh, <laughs> thank you guys to uh, comment and uh, give some uh, good advice and uh, cheer me <laughs> on. And uh, I'm happy. So now is the moment to uh, cheer to the uh, home front. So <laughs> thanks to my wife, wife again and all the people that supporting me. And it was an honor to be here. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. It was absolutely great having you and uh, maybe stick around before we go to the hot so because that, of course, will be Ooh, yeah. the maker or the breaker. Maker or the breaker. Okay, we're going to oh. analyze. We're going to have an <laughs> analysis, I've been it. just told. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? You know, this yeah, is live. Not? We've got Kuhn Martins. We've, we've got Troy Mannering. We've got all the experts we need. <laughs> so let's go for it. Side by side. So here we're going to see Jason Lentz and Martin Komarik. I mean, these are the guys that were battling in the previous seat. What did Ken, you notice you about say this one? Yeah, jump yeah. in there and give us a, a side by side here. Ah, uh, you see, it's uh, neck on neck. You know, it's it's always got a good hard pocket, very uh, deep. It's uh, it's better that uh, you hit like four big hits than um, a little, just not much power in it. Big, deep, solid pocket that you can stand. You well, see. What about the angle from Martin? It ah, doesn't matter. You know, it or pro, pros. It would be better to do it a little bit more flat. Then you have more uh, the balance on two legs. But, you know, they are pros. So it doesn't affect him as much if that it looked. If you are just an amateur starting the competition and you have a board like that, it would be difficult to give your balance. But if you see Martin and uh, Jason go, they are neck on neck and they give all they have, so there's no problem for them. They're just going 100%, and you see, if you now see the block goes off, you see how so close, so close yeah. the, the competition is. I've always is. thought that we were better to have a bit of an angle so you could push off that back leg for more power. Uh, depends what you like. Pro or not, right, I yeah. guess? Yeah. The better is a little bit up, little, not too much. Yeah. That's what I prefer. Okay, so I'm not lying to you, folks. I'm not lying to you, proofs of the yeah, pudding. Yeah. yeah, it's true, it's true. He's not lying. He's giving, uh, if you... Like start uh, in this sport, um, um, listen to the comments that they are giving. So there are very good tips that you can pick up just by watching and commentators. So everything you can learn about the pros, try to do it at home after training with pros, uh, not by your own. Just but not with this next discipline. No, 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 no not the hot <laughs> saw, but just pick the pointers up. Yeah, there's a lot of information coming through, so pick it up and... Please, start in the sports. It's cool. amazing. And love the sport. Enjoy the sport. Uh, and this is the hot saw. This is the maker or the breaker. This is the one and only discipline where the athletes are alone on stage. Yeah, probably the most important event, but uh, yeah, also the most frustrating. These saws are so incredibly powerful and dangerous. Usually the hot saw is uh, the slider. Hot saw, hot saw. Like I can't describe to you when we're out there under pressure. Saw starts well, first this looks solid, cut is good. You know, you're always ending the competition on a hot saw, so you know where you're going to be at when you finish. So you're either at a very big high or just is what it is. Nice clean cut, easy, relaxed. The hot saw is for me the geilste Disziplin der Welt. Hot saw is a love hate for me. I honestly don't get that much enjoyment out of it. I'm not a motorhead. I swallow my pills and eat it. Once the competition comes, anything can happen. Oh no! All start by Sterling Hart. What a disaster! Yeah, it was a disappointment for me. I uh, happens though. It's part of competing. I saw there was three good discs there, but then it let that nose come right up underneath the crossover line. Fortunately, a disqualification. It all relies on the hot saw. Oh no! Irgendwie soll es einfach nicht sein. Und dann springt die hot saw nicht an, wieder mal. <laughs> oh man, that is a bummer for Robert Ebner. What are you taking away from this event? Oh, probably the last place. <laughs> I know, headache. Yeah, shit hot saw. What else do you want? <laughs> if you have bad luck or if you did do it wrong, it's it's part. Just oh, your experience. Oh my goodness. What an absolute disaster. The chain came off. I was not disappointed because everybody see that I can be even the guys 
from a bit of a disaster, so it was just operator error, and I um, yeah didn't perform as well as I would have liked to. I said, but oh no, oh no! Never prepared for that situation, but luckily I started and I got three wheels, and now I'm the world champion. Yeah, it's the make or break event, you know. I think you love and you hate it. It's actually more a geiles thing. I schneid immer sehr sicher. Oh, great start for both of these guys. Look at how quick it's going for Robert Ebner. Oh my God, Robert Ebner, he's got a world record. Holy smokes, smokes! I wanted das Ding heimbringen. I wanted the world record schneiden. And I thank my family at home and all who supported me. Just to try to make three good cuts and no disqualification. The hot sauce is where it's all one. So that's the best event. Well, that's the emotional parts of the hot saw, and here come the facts and figures of the tool and discipline. These custom, handmade race tune machines are built for maximum power and precision and to cut the wood as fast as possible in a competition. They are built with a 60 to 80 horsepower single cylinder two stroke engine often taken from a snowmobile or high-powered motorbike. The hot saw can weigh up to 30 kilograms and its chain rotates at over 250 kilometers an hour. The cost of a competition hot saw used in steel timber sports is upward of 6,000 euros. Hot saw. For the hot saw, power saws are called into action and the athletes have a space of 15 centimeters to cut three complete discs off a 46 centimeter thick wooden block. Jumping the start or cutting over the line will result in a disqualification. And here is the start list uh, for the hot saw. Our top six athletes are in heat one, Mikhail Dubicki against Pierre Puberet in heat two. Sorry, Mikael Dubicki, Heat 1, Heat 2, Pierre Puberet, Heat 3, Ferry Swan, Heat 4, Marcel Dupuis, Heat 5, Jason Lenz, and Heat 6, Martin Komarik. I'm getting a bit excited here. Yeah. Try. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. also have something new. We've got the hot seat yeah. coming up. That, of course, means whoever is in the lead at the moment, who will be sitting on the hot seat. Yeah. And uh, we might see one or two changes there. We have the hot seat. Beautiful. Looks, Look looks at how nice comfy. that yeah. Ford hot seat is, eh? Mm, sexy. Getting a final clean. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And the thing that's different now in this particular individual competition compared to the season's uh, competitions in hot saw that we've had up to this point is we've always, I mean, in the world championships, we always have a single athlete on stage. But prior to this, this season, we've always had two athletes on stage. So now we're switching it back a little bit. It's going to become more exciting, which means that's going to be each guy has a chance to look at the next guy's heat and see if he can improve on it or okay. still if he stays focus in the on hot himself. Seat. Yeah. And off we go with Michael Dubicki. Whoa! Yeah, what? I can't I, hear you. I trying. can't hear what you're saying. We're starting to rock and yeah. roll here. Yeah. Oh, so let's not forget Hot <laughs> Saw's world record was set by Robert Ebner earlier on at the German Championships this season. But he is not just the only guy to make a below five cut. We had mm -hmm. Jason Lentz also get under five seconds in the National Championships in the USA. So, you know, Jason Lentz is in the mix here in this final. He, you know, the, a lot of people are going to be looking at him, but these machines are so finicky. Anything can happen. So we wish all these athletes the absolute best in the hot saw, and let's see how this all breaks down. Mika Dubicki up first. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Eight oh two for Mika Dubicki. That was a bit of a rough second cookie as he had a cutout, but he had to reposition and recut to make sure that he had a complete cookie. He does have three on the deck. Doesn't look like there's any cuts over the lines. 
Hopefully not. So we'll find out what Andy Hall says after the inspection of that block. Okay, congratulations. The cut is good. Well, All the cut right. is good. He's collecting points, but yeah. of course he's not going to be able to uh, take a seat in the hot seat because he had no chance of taking the lead even with the top time. Right. So taking a look back at the start was good. That first cookie was real nice and clean. Here's where the mistake happened. Ah. A cutout had to reposition again. the saw, and then again, and he just went for the uber thick one, and then that final cookie was very nice. And that second cookie was the disaster cookie for him. Otherwise, he probably would have been around five and a half seconds. That's the drawback of these machines, though. They are so insanely powerful, and there's so much going on. They weigh about 30, 35 kilos. You know, the things are so powerful. All those moving parts, and you have to start it, you have to lift it, you have to place it, then you have to cut. All of that stuff happening at the same time while this saw is shaking around in your hands. <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot of wrestling going on on stage in this discipline. And again, it's those small things that make the big difference. Yeah. It is those small things and just getting a clean cut. So 18 points so far for Mika Dubicki and our next athlete will be coming out on stage shortly. Mika Dubicki sitting in third place with that point yeah, total. So at the moment, Komarek and Lenz are in the top two positions, one and two. Interestingly enough, Martin Komarek will be able to watch all of the action as he is our last athlete to compete in Hot Saw today. And Hot Saw, I mean, for him, it's a love-hate relationship. Uh, all right. So Pierre puy barré personal best of 632. He wants to try and get that down to around the five and a half mark. If he can get himself a really solid time, he does have the possibility of taking on the hot seat. So yep, let's see. Has to be to pick his time, yeah. and he will take the seats in the hot seat. He needs a clean cut. He should be okay. able to beat Dubicki's time with what a clean cut. Soul? Let's see how Puy Barre does. Not quite as loud as uh, Dubicki's machine. Yeah, I mean, that's the difference between the Rotax motors. You know, the Rotax motors are just beasts. It also depends on the uh, on the, the muffler that's on there, or rather, not, not muffling. <laughs> Remember the world record held by Robert Ebner, 4.87 seconds. And if you want to see this live, make sure to join us in Gothenburg. Oh, for, yeah. For, for the individual oh, yeah. world championships of Steel Timber Sports. Uh, 2022. Absolutely. Seeing, hearing, feeling this with the live audience is yeah, just it's amazing. it's a different animal altogether. See all the safety equipment that's lying around there as well. The the uh, the specially designed pants to make sure that uh, if a chain flies okay, off or ready. something flies towards Stand him, he's to protected. Timber. Goggles and Three, ear two, one, ear protection, go. the whole bit. It's got to be on. Oh, not bad, not bad. Solid second cut and 7.51. It's gonna do it. Yep. Let's make sure he's got all three cookies. If that's the case. With a 7.51 adjustment, moves him to 7.40. That means that <laughs> Pierre Puybarré from France will take over the hot seat. Okay, congratulations. The cut is good. Bonjour, there you go. Monsieur. Pierre Puybarré will take over the hot seat. I hope somebody tells him that he can come and sit down in it, as uh, he seems to have disappeared towards the back. And the crew comes on stage to make sure that everything is good to go. Let's take a look back here. He took his time with the entry, but the cuts were clean, solid three cookies. And the thing I like about his cookies were the width in each one, that the, the thickness was consistent through all three. And there he is, just moving over to the hot seats. I could see him from our studio. That's brilliant. And he's more or less sitting right next to us, giving us a wave. <laughs> And all of the athletes with a big smile on their face, yeah. obviously enjoying themselves here in Munich at the individual world championships. So Yeah, and why wouldn't they? I mean, oh, yeah, you yeah, know, we finally have a major competition of the individual world championships where these guys 
can all get together. Of course, we're under the 3G regulations here. So everybody is either tested or healed from it or has their shots. So, you know, and at this point, <laughs> every and, day. And, and tested every day. So, uh, yeah, got to fulfill these regulations. And there we are doing it again. Four athletes missing. So time to beat 740. Pierre Puy Barre at the top of the ranking at the moment with next up Ferry Swan. Now, Ferry Swan has been working hard on this discipline. He's got himself one incredible tool out there. You can see the different types of blades they have on that saw. Now, his blade is a little bit fatter in the middle with those really aggressive teeth on the chain. Um, and I prefer, I mean, personally, I've never cut with one of these things before, but I've seen how they react when you've got that straight blade compared to that fatter in the middle blade. And I've talked to a couple of the, the guys, including Danny Martin, who's also got that fat middle blade. And uh, it just holds the chain a little bit better. And this is something that we've seen, the chain skipping off in the past from those thinner blades. Not that it doesn't happen with those big ones, but it's less likely to happen. But what I wanted to say about Ferry Swan after all that rigmarole and blah, 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 <laughs> is that... I, I was wondering, yes, <laughs> yeah, Where is this going say, anyway? Yeah, yeah. No, what I wanted to say about Ferry Swan is he's been working this discipline hard and he's become really adept at the hot saw okay. which we'll see right now Warm up your soul. and the whole process with warming up the saw is to make sure that that motor has all the carbon blown out of it that the motor starts warm if you try and start a cold saw, sometimes mm. it will more often than not stall don't do on it. you. Don't do it. You don't want to do that. You don't want to have that because that just becomes a problem to try and restart that saw for the competition. Because it is a, we'll call it a cold start, but it's not a cold start. But they, they have to actually pull start the machine to get it going. So, yeah, and you can see all the adjustments he's making as we take a look at Pierre Puy-Barré on the hot seat. That's a little bit of a worried look from Pierre Puy-Barré. I got a bad... Got to be honest with I you. I wonder why. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, because he knows that Ferry Swan's a solid competitor here. So, opting for a little prayer instead as he uh, waits for Ferry Swan to get his three cookies on the deck. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Six seven personal zero. Personal best. A you personal said it. best and the fastest time for Ferry Swan, who continues to improve from event to event and season to season. He started strong as a rookie and he continues to show his strength as a pro. What a great set of cuts right there. A personal best. Six seven zero, oh, and he will take over the hot seat, moving into the top spot in the overall okay, standing. Congratulations. The cut is good. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Ferry Swan with a nice time of six, ooh, five, eight after adjustment. So the official time has been changed. Still it a personal is, best. Yep, six, Absolutely. five, eight. So it's a little bit faster. They always take a look at that because the timer stops after the saw leaves the, uh, leaves the, the third cookie uh, on the floor. But they always go back and readjust once they've had their competition control really look through the oh, finite timing. Out. And those are really nice cuts by Ferry Swan, yeah. But like you said, he's been practicing the hot saw very intensively yeah. and uh, Look at that saw that's that's flying. That is insanity. Those are beasts, those machines. Yeah, fantastic. Those slow-mos as well. Good job by Ferry Swan. The 658, a personal best. And the hot seat, that's going to be hard to beat. That's going to be very hard to beat. So, Ferry Swan at the top with a 6.58. Pierre Puy Barre, second place. Mika Dubicki in third at the moment. Well, I'm not sure if that is uh, a good or a scary position for Ferry Swan at the <laughs> moment. He's in the hot seat, yeah. of course. Uh, He's on top of the board at the moment, but there's three more athletes to come. 
Uh, so uh, I, I think we should talk to him and find out what he feels like at this very moment. Lisa is standing right next to him while he's having a comfortable seat in our hot seat. Ferry, Lisa, over to you. Thank you. I mean, as I said before, you're incredibly, that's, it's in, amazing how fast you are. And you proved it once again, so you, now you're sitting in a hot seat. What kind of feeling is that? Uh, it's an amazing feeling to finish off the competition with a personal best as well, so I have to be happy with that. <laughs> I believe that's true. So you think you're going to sit here for a little bit longer? or? Uh, we will see. My time isn't that good, so they should beat it, but we will see. <laughs> All right, well, enjoy your seat. <laughs> All right, back to the studio. Well, very po many points still to be collected. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the top three that are about to come are, of course, the favorites for the title. Yeah, but I mean, he talks about his time being not very good. I mean, Ferry Swan is a little bit too self-effacing in this case. That's a very really modest. nice time. I mean, yeah, super modest, best, yeah? yeah. Uh, that's a good time. And, and to be quite honest with you, that could stand for a while. Who knows? So, uh, meanwhile, Marcel Dupuis, who has a very strong saw, a hot saw, uh, very well could take over the hot seat but like I said that 658 from Ferry Swan is a tough one to beat the way the wood seems to be reacting today and of course there is 13 points that uh, the Puy needs to be in the same number of points like Ferry Swan to reach 59 Ooh, math guy <laughs> yep, and, and, and in round three, we have 18 points for number one, 15 points for number two, 12 points for number three. So he quite needs, a big number of points that are being awarded. He needs second place in minimum fastest, second fastest yep. time to move in the top spot. He needs clean cuts. Be a okay. Warm up your soul. No messing around there, got that thing hot mm -hmm. real fast, and uh, he'll rewrap that uh, pull cord, get ready to go. <laughs> and it seems like there's a lot of pressure on everyone that's yeah. sitting in that, in that seat. Well, you have to know that that's like, he, for Ferry Swan, his competition is done one way or the other. Oh, it doesn't matter what happens at this point. He would obviously like to sit on that hot seat until the very end, but, you know, he believes that there's going to be a faster cut. Whether or not that's the case, it, uh, it's up to the gods now, literally. You and know, he wants to be on a podium. Yeah. But, you know, one of these guys coming up has to either that's the, not be that's that the fast trouble or have a being the second audio. or the third athlete out there. You got three other guys that are going to come after you. Um, so the advantage of being the, the second to last or the last is you get to see what the other guys have done. And at that point, it's all about just getting out there and realizing what you have to do. If you're one of the first two athletes out there, you're setting the pace for the day. So it's a tough job for the first three guys against the last three. three. Two, one. Go! Nice start. Oh, 547! <laughs> a personal best! 547 for Marcel Dupuis. So he has just busted down the door, and Ferry Swan, a little bit prolific, said, Okay, I think there's going to be somebody faster than me. Well, it's Marcel Dupuis <laughs> if everything goes according to plan, and we don't have any problems with his cuts. Do we? Which seems like it's the case. And that, of course, is a big shout-out oh, no, to Jason Lenz and Martin him. Komarek. They're talking to him here. So we'll find out now what the story is from Andy Hall. Okay, congratulations. The cut is good. 5-4-3, a personal best for Marcel Dupuis, and that means he will take over the hot seat from Ferry Swan. 64 points for Marcel Dupuy after this cut for the moment. But it definitely means that he has eight more points than Ferry Swan, so takes over the hot seat. And the hot seat has changed uh, bottoms three times now, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, it's in, uh, it's getting interesting. And, and you know, like talking about the maker or the breaker really is the case here. So Marcel Dupuy has just set the standard at 5-4-3. Now we know that Jason Lentz can cut below a five, the question is, will he be able to pull that off here today? And of course, we know that Marcel Dupuis from Canada is going to go home with a medal. Yeah, no matter what. He would like to have the gold, but uh, <laughs> who wouldn't? it's about the last two guys now. So there is a lot of pressure on those two guys, Jason Lentz and Martin Comrade. Jason Lentz will be cutting next. 
Ah, look at those pictures. Brilliant stuff. That is the original Extreme Sport. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Two personal bests off the top there. Love it. Love to see that stuff, especially for a good Canadian kid, Marcel Dupuis. Okay. Fantastic so. level, yeah. So if any of you out there are hockey fans, then you'll know Grapes or Don Cherry. He always used to really, uh, you know, so talk a lot about the the good Canadian kids and his thing would be good Canadian kid <laughs> and there he goes speaking oh. of that oh that way to the beach <laughs> having Marcel a great Dupuis. time huh yeah but you know what the pressure is off of Marcel at the moment so he just has to sit there and relax no matter what happens he's got himself a medal big breath all right here Jason we go Jason Benz coming up and let's not forget, it's his first appearance at the yeah, individual I, World Championships. I also Championship. forgot that he was, he was at the World Championships before, but under the, in the team competition, yep. which unfortunately we don't have this year. Uh, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to bring that back because that's really fun as well. And uh, yeah, I, I completely ignored the fact that Jason Lentz is participating as an individual for the first time. And the chances of going home with a medal are not bad at all. But of no, course, let's he not forget. Needs to have a good cut. <laughs> yeah. And he needs to get that hot sauce started, and there's a lot of things that can be happening in the hot sauce, as we know. Yeah, that's the big thing. So I the mean, pressure is on. It's really, for him, uh, you know, traveling over, he's representing the United States as the top athlete from their national championship. So, you know, not only is the pressure on for him personally, but it's also on him nationally for the results here. So he needs to have, at this point, he would be smart just okay. to aim for a good, clean cut. Warm up your soul. These guys also have a very practiced hand at this, you know. Uh, the more you train on this situation, the more you practice these situations, the more <laughs> you're put under up. these high pressure experiences, the more you're going to feel at, at peace and calm when this comes to, to this point here. Seconds. I'm so happy I, I'm not out there at the moment. I can really oh, feel the pressure. Hell <laughs> no. I mean, you know, that uh, for Marcel Dupuis, you know, he, he's, he's done. He doesn't need to sweat it anymore. He would love to have the top spot. But for him, it's just about enjoying watch the moment. Watch his face. I mean, he's, he's still in agony. 5.43 is the time to beat by Marcel Dupuis at the moment. Jason Lenz, as we know, can cut under a five. Does he have a good block of wood? Is it a melon? Or is he going to have to uh, Ugly, fight through it? Let's see. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Five eighty, personal 580, best. a personal best, but not quite as fast as Marcel Dupuis. Fast enough. Fast enough. Yep. Fast enough. So he will take over the hot seat, but Marcel Dupuis had the faster cut. Yep. And oh, some discussion going on here. Hmm. Doesn't seem like anything. If untoward. Andy says the cut oh, is good. No, wait a minute. We, we have, have a, yellow a flag, flag on oh the play. Oh my word. But if Andy says the cut is good, Jason Lenz will take over the lead with 68 points. So they're going so to video going to review. Start. Oh, oh no. no! Oh no, that would be terrible for Jason. That would be terrible. Look at the graphics, look at the cameras. Me? Why me? <laughs> This is what these high-speed, slow-motion cameras are all about here. Yeah, that's good. All right, it looks like, it looks like we got the thumbs up, but we have to wait for the official I call no on idea, stage from Andy Hall. And look at the nervousness from Jason right now, oh my God. He must be sweating bullets. Okay, after the video check. The cut is good. Whoa! Ah. Andy <laughs> Hall is playing games out there. <laughs> Andy, we need to talk about yeah, this later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's no oh, beer for him tonight. Wow. So Jason That's the Lentz second will best take time over of the hot day, seat. And he will take over the hot seat. And it means yeah. Jason Lentz in his first individual world championships will at least go home with a silver medal for the US. Yep. Martin Komarek, though, he's up next. Look at that big hang we had way up high. 
Took him a while to get into the cuts, and then the cuts were finally there. And at the end, the cuts were good. The timing was good for the start. Had he been a little bit quicker to get that first drop, would have probably shaved off about a half a second's worth of time. Nevertheless, it doesn't matter. His time slightly slower than Marcel Dupuy, but fast enough for a personal best and for the hot seat. And we've seen three personal bests in this hot seat competition. Wow. So who will win the individual world championships? Will it be Jason Lenz from the United States or will it be Martin Komarek from the Czech Republic? So all Martin Komarek has to do is get second place. He needs to get the second fastest time and he will be the new world champion. So Ooh. Martin Komarek is going to be analyzing this and thinking about it. You know he's a competitor. He wants to battle through on this one. So we're going to be crossing our fingers for Martin Komarek just to have three good cuts. Yeah. Above all. Oh my way. <laughs> this, this is unbelievable. And of course, we've got Jason Lentz uh, in the hot seat yeah. now. And, and imagine the pressure he's got to oh, feel. Man. You don't want to sit, you, you want to move around. Well, at least I want to move around. I, yeah, I, yeah. It, it's all that tension that like, comes into you. Oh my God, this is it. This is the Steel Timber Sports Individual World Championship 2021. Only one more competitor coming up, and that and is that Marty is Comerick. Yeah, I mean. Whew. Martin's, uh, you, you could see his qualifications there, you know, top to bottom. He is one of the best timber sports athletes, and he's proved it this year. Among the nations in Europe, he is the number one overall points getting athlete. And this three times is silver. Three no gold so far. Uh, yeah, bridesmaid, never a bride. Okay? <laughs> you know, so, so this is this is the what time where he's going to have to make it happen. We've seen him struggle with this discipline in the past. I don't want to jinx him. This uh, is the time for him to really shine. And Jason Lenz almost doesn't want to look at him. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> giving us a smile. Oh. I'm really warming up his soul, Martin. Yeah, he's not taking any chances here. He wants that thing hot to trot. <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> heating up the hot zone. Oh, go it, Martin. 30 seconds. Uh, the pressure is mounting here for us now. It's not for not everyone. Just in for, not just for uh, Martin. It's also for Munich. Yeah. I mean, just take a look around. Uh, you know, we, we've got a great view here to see behind the scenes and everybody is just on their toes. Even the cameramen are sweating. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, so this is what all comes down to our last competitor of the evening. Komarek or Lenz? Komarek or Lenz. Who's it going to be? Komarek needs to have, at the very Only least, a second ready. place run. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> is that going to be enough? Is that going to be enough? No. Third place, the third fastest time. We'll wait for the check on the block and the cuts by our judges to make sure that everything is solid. But a 720 after adjustment puts him in fourth. And that means in third position overall. Okay, congratulations. 63 points. The cut is good. For Martin Komarek, who wins so, bronze. Marcel Dupuy takes silver for Canada. And, and Jason Lenz. From the US, <laughs> the new individual world champion. Can you Great believe job. it? Yes, I can, actually. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Great job by Jason Lenz. He came, he saw, he conquered. Absolutely. Bit of a rough start. Bit of yes. a rough start, we have to admit. You know, uh, we saw him struggle a little bit in that underhand chop. That's the beauty of the sport. But after that, it was all uphill for him. Oh, wow. And I think he can already believe it. Because like for the first seconds, he was like, OK, what does that Wait, mean? What? What does huh? that? The maths, <laughs> let's do the maths. And there he is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. How about that? I'm still not sure he's really absorbed it 100% at this oh, point, you know? I, I think he's... Uh, he's Let's take a look back here yeah. at uh, Martin Komarek's cut. Now, he got in fairly quickly with a really nice thin first cookie. He paused a little bit on the upstroke for the second cookie. And then, yeah, he was just a hair slow and uh, wasn't his day today. But at least the sauce 
kept running and the chain stayed on. I mean, a few of us have uh, seen those chains come off on a few of these guys. And yeah, this time he had three good cuts and three good cookies on the floor. So congratulations to Martin Komarek for second to third place overall. Oh, great pictures here. And what a night. <laughs> I can see you're shaking, but in a good way, kind yeah. of shaking to the music, enjoying yourself. I'm rocking and rolling. <laughs> so there he is. Oh, the there's the moment. The hour, there's Jason the moment. Lentz. So let's take a look at the final overall standings here and make it official. So Jason Lentz on top with 68 points, Marcel Dupuis with 64, and Martin Komrek with 63 will be our podium. So let's take one more look at this final result with uh, Armin Kugler ending up in 12th position and 13 points. Andrea Rossi also claiming 13 points but just being a bit faster than Armin. Uh, Robert Ebner in 10th with 15 points. Elgin Pugh also having 15 points again. It is the time difference uh, that makes the positions. In 8th position, Severin Bühler who had a lot of personal best today. Kern Martins uh, just missing out the top 6 claiming the 7th place and Mikhail Dubicki in 6th. Pierre Puberi in fifth and Ferry Swan just missing the podium, just missing the podium. getting fourth. And we have a studio guest, uh -huh. the world record holder <laughs> in the hot so uh, Robert, how Hello. are you doing? Wie geht's? Good, thank you. War, glaube ich, heute sehr, sehr spannend. Uh, für dich allerdings ein bisschen durchwachsen heute die Competition, oder? Ja, ein bisschen durchwachsen. Ich war einfach nicht meine Stärke, deswegen ja, bin ich jetzt auch hier, glaube ich. Um, sollte einfach nicht so sein, aber es war ein richtig spannender Wettkampf heute. Ja. Ich hätte Martin Komarek das wirklich mal gewünscht. Ja, ja. Ich glaube, als, vielen ist es so gegangen. Ja, ja. Als erster Europäer, aber ja, sollte nicht sein. So, so Robert said he was not on top of his game uh, today and um, yeah, this is how, how close everything is in, in Steel Timber Sports. Um, he, he would have wished uh, Martin Komarek after three silver medals uh, to finally make gold. But uh, that didn't work out mm. today either. But I think everybody had a big smile on their face. Mm. Es war, glaube ich, für alle trotzdem ein, ein richtig toller Bewerb. Und That's right. Es war von Anfang an, uh, ja, einmal hier, einmal da, auch, auch vom späteren Weltmeister eigentlich ein, ein schwieriger Start. Also mm. da sieht man, wie eng ja, dieser Top-Level mm. bei Steel Timber Sports im Moment ist. Das ist richtig. Ja. Wie fühlt es sich an für dich jetzt uh, hier zu stehen? Was hast du dir vorgenommen gehabt für diese Weltmeisterschaft? Gut, ähm... Um ja, es ist ja heute mein letzter Wettkampf, das habe ich ja äh, angekündigt und ähm, ich habe mir es natürlich besser ausgemalt, mehr oder weniger, aber ähm, ich war einfach nicht mal in der Stärke, es hat mehrere Gründe und ähm, ja, ich gehe jetzt mit einem freudigen Lachen da raus und wo eine Tür zugeht, geht die andere wieder auf. Da muss und ich kurz mal einhaken, wenn du sagst, dein letzter Bewerb in dieser Saison oder reden wir hier? Insgesamt. Das heißt also, du gibst hier mehr oder weniger äh, deinen Rücktritt bekannt? Habe ich schon vorher per Mail. Ähm, und ich hab, bin ja eigentlich jetzt dahergekommen, weil ich gedacht habe, ähm, das wäre jetzt Thema. Ähm, es soll auch ein Mitschritt irgendwie gezeigt werden, aber gut, dann ist es nicht so. <lacht> nein, nein, das, also es gab natürlich eine, eine Menge Gerüchte. There, there have been a lot of rumors, uh, Troy, about... Uh, yeah, we heard, we heard all sorts of different things going on, but... Uh, Best to get it from the horse's mouth, also direct from the uh, source, so to say. So, so Robert just told us it is his final competition today and uh, he's going to end his career. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for us, it is kind of uh, news, but I, I, I heard uh, that uh, some people already knew. Obviously, you uh, must have talked to someone before. And, and I think we're going to get to see uh, some greetings uh, for, for Robert now, if that's uh, true. Oh, yes. Make some noise for our friend from Germany there. On this underhand chop, Robert Ebner in the black, slabbing big chunks off of that block. And as you heard, this is one of his favorite events. He likes all the axe disciplines. Robert Ebner doing very well. 
Robert Aimner looking a little bit nervous before the start of this one, but this is a discipline he does well. <lacht> Dankeschön. Ha. Wow. Darf ich, wow. Noch, darf ich noch was sagen? Zolle Bilder. Hm. We're gonna miss you. Wir werden dich vermissen, ja. aber wenn ja. du das jetzt so siehst, ja. was löst das aus in dir? Natürlich, ähm, ja, ich hatte sehr viele schöne Jahre. 16 Jahre habe ich den Sport jetzt gemacht und ähm, ja, konnte nach meinem Unfall 2014 noch mal richtig angreifen und bin froh drum, aber die Gesundheit ist mir halt extrem wichtig und ich danke der Firma Stiel, dass ich das 16 Jahre lang machen durfte, auch meinen ganzen Sponsoren, Medialob, Catlitz, Logosol, ja, Schlotter, Endres, die mich die ganzen Jahre unterstützt haben, die ganzen mentalen Trainer, vielen, vielen Dank und ähm, ja, und auch meine Family zu Hause, die sicherlich jetzt auch vor dem Fernseher sitzen, mir den Rücken freigehalten haben. Vielen Dank und es waren richtig schöne 16 Jahre. Und ähm, ich werde mir das wieder einmal anschauen, aber ich habe es vorhin gesagt, ähm, wo eine Tür auf, zugeht, geht die andere wieder auf. Und ich bin gespannt, wo der Weg mir hingeht. Also es hat irgendwas mit Wald zu tun, auf jeden Fall. Und ähm, ja, vielleicht bis irgendwann. Ciao. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, also ich bin mir ganz, ganz sicher, dass wir noch äh, viel, viel, viel von dir hören werden. Es war wunderschön, dass du heute hier gemeinsam mit uns diesen Abschied äh, unter Anführungszeichen gefeiert hast, dass du noch einmal zu uns in die Studie gekommen bist. Ich danke Und, euch. Uh, a big thank you, a big thank you goes out uh, from Roberts to all much. his friends, uh, family, Thank supporters you. and uh, sponsors. The gentleman of Steel Timber Sports uh, says goodbye. And uh, we're going over to the prize winning ceremony of the Steel Timber Sports Individual World Championship 2021. Lisa, over to you. All right. Thanks, Marcus. The time has come. <laughs> we'll start the official award ceremony. Third place and winner of the bronze medal Representing Czech Republic is Martin Komarek. The silver medal representing Canada is Marcel Dupuis.
now, in honor of the winner, the anthem of the United States. All right, guys, champagne shower. <laughs> champagne shower! Do it, do it! Oh, that's very smart, getting the trophy out of the way. That's what yeah. I would do. Very good idea. Don't you want to mess that up? <laughs> yeah. Got to enjoy that mess. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome, it's right behind us, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's an what a night. right there. Good job by all three of those guys. And again, Martin Komarek, I just love the personality, yeah. you know? Just celebrating that bronze medal, having a great time. Yeah. That was amazing. I'm shaking. Everybody else is shaking. We're so happy. That was just an incredible, amazing World Championship 2021 here in Germany, Munich. And I, I just, I, I don't have words. Back to the studio, guys. Well, thanks very much, uh, Lisa. I know one man that always has words, yeah, and yeah, that's okay. Troy Manerik. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it was a great competition. Who who can argue that? Yeah, of course, we talked about Martin Komarek, and, uh, you know, we wished him all the best to get to the top, and he was that close. But look how he celebrated, like you mentioned, that third place. That is just fantastic. You have to enjoy those moments, no matter how they come to you. And, and again, he's on the podium, so he is so consistent, so strong. Marcel Dupuy, silver medalist. I mean, again, a super strong competitor, absolutely a monster out there. But the man of the hour walking into the studio now, Jason Lentz. Come on over and join us, Jason. Hello, world champion. Hello. Put these on and you're ready to rock. Oh, nice. All right. Uh, almost everything Need gone. <laughs> Need a drink? <laughs> yeah. Almost everything <laughs> gone. So is consistency the key today for your win? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I didn't win any event, but uh, I was in the top right to the end. So the point system added up and gave me the victory. And of course, you called it, Troy. Yeah, I made the call. I mean, three fourths and three second places in the competition. So that gave you the points at the top. You were sitting on the hot seat and watching Martin Komarek's last cuts. What was going through your head? Uh, don't cut below <laughs> five, seven up. <laughs> But, yep. I mean, you got to be a little bit nervous. I mean, chomping the bit a little bit to see how it's going. You don't want to wish anybody bad. but Yeah, uh, no, definitely not. Martin's a great competitor. So yep. is Marcel. And I, it was great to compete against them and the rest of the guys today. Um, yeah, I'm glad to see them at the on the podium as well. And I wish nobody bad luck. So. Yeah, okay. Now, I mean, obviously it's nice to have you guys all back in the mix and everybody together. You know, North Americans are joining us again. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys all back. One thing that, that Floaty and I uh, realized that we've seen you at the World Championships before, but in the team competition, and this is your actual, this is your first individual competition. That's got to be a proud moment for you, especially, you know, coming from and being the only representative of uh, the U.S. Yeah, it's a definite honor to uh, represent the United States. Um, yeah, I've been over here a few times competing uh, on the team's race or whatever, and yeah, it, it helps to have those guys in your back pocket. It, sure. I, I, 
I don't know, me personally, I, I wish a few of the guys were here to support and uh, help out with gear or whatever or yeah, be my bag boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked like you guys were having a great time. You know, we looked over to you. You, you gave us a grin. Uh, you know, people walking past each other, competitors, but, you know, say, oh, best of luck for you guys. Is that what Steel Timber Sports is all about? Yeah, wood chopping in general is just a tight-knit community, family per se. Uh, yeah, everybody wished me congratulations, and I, I wished everybody best of luck in the beginning of the show. And Yeah, just how it ended up. And he looks even stronger and taller you're standing right next to him yeah. than, on, than on TV. You, 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 when, when you make me look like a pixie, that's when you know somebody's a big boy, right? <laughs> Best of uh, luck for the future for you. I know we're going to see you back on uh, a podium in the future, uh, definitely. And congratulations on today. What a fantastic job you've done out there. Thank you very uh, much. And, of course, you have to defend the title in Gothenburg uh, next year in October. And, and stay with us uh, because we're going to show you the best, most beautiful pictures of the day. And, uh, yeah... <laughs> There's been a quite a lot to watch, so yep. enjoy that. See you soon. Bye-bye. Have Ciao a good everybody. night. See ya.